My two best friends and I would take night rides into Harriman State Park late at night to see what we could spot at night. For example, bear, deer, fox, etc. It's a beautiful park, and the solitude at night in the off-season makes the park special and creepy too. As we're driving the very windy, as we were driving the very windy Garden Valley Road, we had to go slow due to the turns and danger of the steep drop-offs on the roadside. I was a front seat passenger, high beams on, driving no more than 25 to 35 miles an hour. At the max viability of the headlight, I see the outline of a large upright being running across in front of us and leaping the bank on the high side of the road, instantly disappearing into the rhododendron thickets. I freaked out upon first visual and alerted my friends. The driver hit the brakes, windows open, we could hear thrashing of the ground from running, but the sighting was over. My friend, the driver, did see the movement but couldn't make out what made it. We both agreed on the sound of it fleeing up the steep slope. What solidified my two friends' belief in what I saw was the look of fright and amazement on my friend's face. Features of the upright being I saw were large thick hair covered legs, human-like strides and tall enough that the headlights did not focus above its midsection, so I couldn't make out any facial features. We were not drinking or doing any illegal substances. My brother and I have a story that happened during the day and we're both positive what we saw was a skinwalker. Here's what happened. We were staying in Wenatchee in Washington state. It's kind of Eastern, but not really. Like it wants to be Eastern, but it's not. Anyhow, we were staying with my friend's family whilst my parents were out of state. My friend's mom, I'll call her Tammy, says to me, we would get your brother, dinner's ready. To which I replied, where is he? My friend, I'll call her Emily, goes, I think he's by the river. So I said, okay, and went to go get him. I crossed the backyard, which is really a field, and prepared myself to go down a stupidly steep hill. The only way to get down the hill was to keep your foot planted on some rocks. It's either that or you fly down. I got down the hill and say my brother just chilling on a swing thing. You know, the swings with two or three seats on them? Those things. I stood behind for a minute planning to push the swing a little and scare him. But I heard my name being called. So, naturally, I turned around, thinking it was Emily calling me or something. No one on the field. I had and still have a pretty active imagination, so I just brushed it off. I turned back to the swing, and my brother was standing up now. His eyes were fixed across the river, so I looked over too. We saw a deer looking thing standing on its back legs and I again was just like, oh, it's my imagination again. I looked away for a few seconds, then turned back. My brother was now shaking. He still hadn't even noticed me. The deer guy was still there, but its mouth was moving. It was saying my name. I just could barely make it out, but it was saying my name. It started to shake as well. My brother turned around, ready to run back to the house, and yelled when he saw me. This was the following conversation between us. What happened? Did you see it too? The deer? It wasn't a deer. I don't know what that thing was, but it was not a deer. Was it calling my name to you? No, it was calling my name. We can talk about it later, but I was sent to go get you five minutes ago. Dinner's ready. And I know I said I have a very active imagination, but the part that scares me is that my brother does not, and he saw exactly what I saw. And so we went inside and ate dinner, and said nothing of it. We had both relaxed for the most part by this time we got back to the house, and we texted each other about it after so nobody would know but us. 
About a year after the happening, my brother came into my room and said, Hey, remember that deer thing we saw in Wenatchee a few years ago? I told him I thought about it frequently, and what he said actually scared me so bad, I thought I was going to go into cardiac arrest. He goes, Well, I've done some major research, and we could have died if we went near it. Turns out it was a skinwalker and he continued to tell me about skinwalkers and what they do. I'm not getting into it, but every now and again, we both share a look when someone starts talking about stuff like wendigos and skinwalkers, urban legends and creepypasta, stuff like that, and neither of us had said anything about it. But my brother decided to tell my dad, who grew up with urban legends and stuff like that, and he also thinks it's a skinwalker. I can still see that evil thing's face every time I hear about Wendigo and Skinwalker encounters. My brother got a kind of mental effect from this thing. Defect. Effect. I don't even know what to call it. I don't want to say it's like PTSD, but certain things around the topic will trigger him. He'll constantly have nightmares about it, and he doesn't like talking about it, unless he initiates the conversation. I'm a little more thick-skinned around the topic of scary things, but it scared me into thinking I was going to die on the spot. We haven't been back to Wenatchee. My partner lives on the edge of a large, unspoiled state park, with miles of forest all around. When I'm there working on our project, I have to go outside to smoke, and I would usually just sit on a log and scan the wilderness for deer or other critters to pass the time. It's very quiet, no traffic sounds, just the raw wildlife. One afternoon, as I sat looking into the woods, I heard what sounded like a baby or a very small child crying. By the sound of it at least, I would guess that. And I would guess that it was no more than 100 yards into the forest, but the trees and brush obstructed the view. I am no stranger to the woods, and I was certain that sound was probably a fawn looking for its mother, and not a human. So, I went back in to work. Soon after that, I had to drive into town for parts, which took about two hours before I got back. The sun was just going down as I took up my usual smoking spot. The crying continued with a sense of urgency coming from the same approximate area in the woods. I was still convinced it was a baby deer, and supposed its mother was dead somewhere. I was at a time a critical part of the project and really couldn't stop to go rescue a baby fawn. About an hour later, I was at a stopping point and went out for a smoke. The crying was still there, and by now, it sounded like it was losing strength. It was now or never. I went in and got a wall charged spotlight with a green light indicating a full battery and a short piece of rope. By now, it was jet dark out with heavy cloud cover as I dutifully plunged into the brush at the edge of a ravine that was steep enough to have a slide down on my butt, walk through the shallow creek and scale the other side using boots and branches to climb up. I expected to come back through this with a baby deer in my arms and would just have to deal with that when I came to it. Once I got back on level ground on the opposite bank the crying sounded closer, but still not visible in the search beam. This area was new growth, with saplings and thorn brush extending up a slight incline with the occasional oak and walnut trees. I stopped to rest and looked around to get my bearings, but couldn't see any lights from the house. Nothing but woods, and a crying baby, somewhere in the middle distance. I plotted up the incline for approximately 100 yards in the direction of the sound, but still couldn't visualize the animal. It still sounded like the crying was about 100 yards away. I guessed it was walking away from me, so I called out in a soft, unthreatening manner. The crying paused for a second, and then started again. I thought maybe it stopped walking now, and I kept going, It's alright buddy, I won't hurt you." I pushed my way through the tangles and thorns to another open area where I stopped to scan with the light. Nothing but the sound of crying just out of sight. 
now that I was closer to the source, the sound was eerily like a human, which just made the circumstance all the more frustrating. If it was a child, it apparently didn't speak English because no calls were answered. By now, I thought it was a child lost in the woods and was too terrified to speak to me. Between me and the sound of a formidable fortress of blackberry bushes with a spider web of grape vines covering the outer surface. This is tough to get through, even with a chainsaw. So I knelt down to a low crawl into the base. That's when the light went out. No fade out, no warning, just off. The battery indicator was also off. This device was completely dead. The darkness was absolute as I stood back up to get my bearings. The crying had stopped and there was no sound, no crickets, peepers, of anything. I looked around without moving my feet so I could approximate the direction I had come. Not a single light of civilization could be seen anywhere. And now the flashlight had become a useless piece of responsibility that occupied one of my only two tools, my hands. I had left my lighter and cigarettes on the log since I didn't know it was going to take this long. I had the rope around my neck and shoulder, and that was the extent of my resources. The crying sound was replaced by a whimpering from apparently the same original location, about 30 feet through the Bramble Fortress. As I stood there in absolute darkness, I did the math. If it was a human, I obligated by creed and honor to attempt to reach this child under these conditions, even at my own peril. So I knelt back down. I had to go. I had to. I took off the rope so I could snake through the thorns with a little snaggage as possible. I took in a deep breath and ready to go in. And just then, I hear a giggle coming from right beside my right foot. In my mind, I could see it from about four inches away and from about 12 inches high. Under any other circumstances, I would have immediately concluded a practical joke and even gave that the benefit of a doubt for a moment. Hard as it was, I kept my feet planted so I wouldn't lose the only thing I had, a relative direction to go back to the world. There was no more crying, and I had the feeling the giggle came from the same organism now somewhere behind me. I heard leaves ruffle and small twigs cracking here and there. It giggled again with an unmistakable lilt of threat about five feet to my left. Then I heard a second giggle coming from up above about 20 feet away, not moving. A split second later, it had soundlessly joined the first on the ground to my left and giggled from roughly the same 12 inch stature. They were able to circle me and move off very fast, judging by the sound of the leaves and stems. At this point, I had concluded that there was no child in danger and I needed to get the hell out of there. I did an about face and started off thinking even if I'm off by several degrees, I'll still eventually see light from the house. When you make the decision to flee, it starts a cascade effect of fear and harder flight. The two entities were staying about two feet behind me as I began picking up speed, slamming face first into oaks and plowing through raspberries without regard to ripping and tearing of flesh and clothes. Still. My pursuers outright laughed as I barreled through heavy growth. Spiderwebs and blood covered my face at one point. The laughing came from just inches from my right ear. I felt like a stampeding steer, blindly bulldozing anything in its way. I finally reached the edge of the ravine and now could see the house light and my partner on the other shore. I half slid and jumped down the 20 foot wall into the creek with a face plant. While struggling to get back up, I could hear the two giggling, sneering entities from the edge of the ravine. My partner called out, Are you alright? And I replied, Can you see them? There's two of them right near the edge. What the hell are they? He said he can only make out two black blobs from the lip of the wall. That's about all I could see of them too. The house light had little effect this far out. He asked again, what the hell is going on? Just then, as I was clamoring up the other back, the two creatures flew silently 
except for the vocalizations, near my left ear, up the bank and right past my partner's shoulders, and out into the night. I have no idea what they were, and my partner, who is a wildlife veterinarian, had no clue. This is not fiction, and this description was from my corroborated memory. I can tell you, sleep was not in my immediate future, so I googled the history of the area, and sure enough, an old Indian legend of the crying voice in the woods luring young warriors to their death. I was with two of my friends exploring this mountain next to an abandoned winer where apparently a family died there and on our way down from climbing the mountain after we spotted a dark figure with our camera at the top from an old farm where we got to the bottom. We went over the hill a little, and I say a family that looked like a ghost. This happened one year ago when we ate food and went back out an hour later, and then we saw an unidentifiable object in the sky, and it looked like it crashed into the same mountain where we just were and went back, and nothing was there. So a year ago, me and a friend were coming back from going swimming in a local town. My friend lives in a little town called Holton. As we were cycling along, my friend's tire collapsed, so we tried fixing it. Suddenly a howl erupts from the woods, and with me binge watching nature documentaries and knowing a bit about animals, I couldn't place it. It was incredibly deep, and the entire woods and wilderness fell silent. We worked harder and harder, with one of us looking over the woods we were in. After a while, I saw it. Two red eyes and pointy ears behind a bush, around 50 meters away from us. As we bolted, we decided to come back today. It really scared us when we came back and saw that the bush it was looking over was as tall as me. I was 5'3 at the time. The beast I saw was a hellhound. I come from a family of hunters. It was not uncommon for my mom and stepdad to go out early morning and not come home until well into the night on occasion. In rural Georgia, it is fairly common for landowners to lease out their acres for hunting to different folks depending on the seasonality and the type of hunting they are doing, and deer season for archers begins at the end of summer. My mother has this story that I love to hear as a child that as an adult had a horrifying twist. One afternoon, my parents struck out to hunt for the day. The land they leased that particular year ran alongside a power line route. These routes are clear cut through woods and create a man-made field. A hunter can set their tree stands up in the thickets of surrounding these fields and waiting for grazing animals to come by. Around dusk, my mom started to look out for my stepdad to come and pick her up. He would usually help her get situated in her stand, then go and find his and set up further down the trail. As the sun began to sink, she saw him walking down the power line clearing. My stepdad is a brawlic type man that has a wide gait in his walk. He swings his arm a bit as he walks. I mean, it's kind of similar to a caveman to me. Even in the low sinking light, she could make out his silhouette and could see that he was zigzagging from side to side of the clear-cut field. He'd obviously forgotten where they had set her stand up and was trying to find her. So, she stood up, waved her hands to get his attention. At that moment, the creature she thought was my stepdad noticed her. It dropped down to all fours and darted into the woods, making a strange low growl as it did. She waited for what seemed like an eternity for my stepdad to come and get her. She was terrified and in tears. This story was shared many times in my childhood, and when I asked for a scary hunting story, they had plenty of them. It's not that I didn't believe my mom, but we all know that the night can play tricks on us and heighten our imagination. So, when I asked for this story in my teenage years, imagine my surprise when my stepdad spoke up. A man of few words and a lack of imagination, he raised his head at the dinner table. I've never told either of you this, but I think I probably should. That night, the creature wasn't running away from your mother. 
I was walking along the line of the woods toward her tree stand when I noticed it. I smelt it before I actually saw the thing. It had a pungent odor, almost skunk-like, and it seemed to be a little over six foot tall, covered in thick, coarse hair. It saw me about the same time as I drew back an arrow to take aim. At first it growled and then dropped to all fours and sprinted towards me as I released the arrow, knocking it in the arm. I was shaking and just missed the intended hit. The animal veered to the side and kept running. To this day, I wonder what that creature was. This is an encounter I had several years ago deer hunting during gun season in rural West Virginia. I was hunting on my aunt and uncle's land. I was situated in a tree stand on top of a ridge line and could see down into either side. Visibility was limited, though, due to brush and trees. It was a little after daybreak and all the shooting had started. All of a sudden, I hear this massive crashing through the underbrush in front of me, headed down in between the two ridge lines. Whatever this was, was walking on two legs clearly from the sound of it, and it was big. I couldn't see much other than a large dark shape running through the brush. I've heard hunters before trying to flush deer that had bedded down, and this wasn't that. It was something running to get away from something. The neighbors on that side were too old to hunt and do this. To my knowledge, nobody was in the woods that direction of my stand. I didn't get a clear look at whatever it was, but I know it was walking on two legs and either dark brown or black in color. Haven't seen it since then, and I'm not sure if it's even still there now. I just know it was unnerving at the time. My dad even mentioned it to me when we met for lunch and asked if it was me or if I saw who it was. I told him what I saw and heard, and he just said, huh, well that's weird. I don't know if it was a Bigfoot or some other humanoid. Also, for reference, this was close to the Mothman sightings, but it wasn't the Mothman that much I know. I've been interested in crawlers for a long time, even if I didn't necessarily know what to call them. I read a post a long time ago about how humans have a deep fear for creatures that resemble them and theorized we had an ancestral memory of long extinct predator. I've toyed with the idea on and off for a long time since then. I've been seeing something walking around my office in the bushes. At first it was transient, but now I'm not so sure. I got a pretty good look at it out the window the other day and it looked all wrong for a human. I'm afraid about some of the people who work here late at night. Does anyone know any real information about these? And no, I'm not talking about the fictional creepypasta or the rake. I'm talking about a real creature. I thought I would post about an encounter with a strange creature that I had. I'm a pretty big skeptic when it comes to stuff like this, and sometimes I doubt whether I actually saw it or not, but I remember it very clearly. In my hometown, there's a forest that's pretty big. Trails around the edges where people walk their dogs, but no one really goes inwards to the depths of it. Once a month or so, I get there bird watching. There's also a small river which, in drier months, is basically just a dip filled with mud and leaves. I walk along it on my way in, again on my way out. About two years ago, I was walking along the riverbank in May or June when, ahead of me, I saw what looked like a pale, hairless nude person digging around in the mud. I got a bit closer and realized the thing didn't appear to be human. It was quite tall, its skin being a light medium gray, and it had no facial features that I could discern from at a distance, but with what looked to be a large, sunken, deep eyes. It was squatting and using its hands to rifle through the mud. Its arms were very long compared to a human, and it was very thin. I watched it for about 30 seconds or so when it looked in my direction, and I think it saw me. Because it paused and seemed to be staring at me for a few seconds, it then turned around, disappearing quickly but casually into the trees on all fours. I hadn't seen it before or since. 
I left just after because I was apprehensive and worried it might be something aggressive, but there wasn't anything in its demeanor that made me feel threatened. It was like watching an animal foraging and seemed calm the whole time. A lot of encounters I've read seem to be about creatures that have a menacing energy, but this thing just seemed to want to go about its business uninterrupted. If anyone has any idea what I might have seen, I'd appreciate it if you could let me know. Let me start with, I'm a 37 year old who has seen many things from dogmen, alien, ghosts, even what most would call a vampire. Not sure if it was really one or something else. I have sent this to a few more YouTubers like you, but have never heard back. I have an unwanted draw to these things. The encounter I wish to share with you today is one that started back on 2007, just a few years after Hurricane Katrina. I was almost a year into my new job, working on ATMs and I was driving home from Homa, Louisiana on Interstate 90. It was quite late, nearly midnight, and I was the only person on the road at the time. You have to watch out for gators crossing on this back highway. I was about a mile or two past the 90, 316 crossing, so you could look it up on Google Maps to see. There in the road was a six to eight foot gator so I was just seating in my van, waiting for the gator to cross when it goes into attack stance. Coil the tail up next to the body and head. I could hear it hissing, like there was something out there. I started to look around because a gator that big is not usually scared of anything but boats. From the left side of the road, a large, nearly 10 foot dog-like creature leapt out and attacked the gator. It nearly bite the neck in half and also left arm claws was digging deep into the stomach of the gator. When the gator stopped moving, the creature stood up. Its eyes sighted red from my headlights. Blood dripped from its claws and teeth. The creature growled and showed its bloody teeth at me. It felt like a lifetime passed before it let out a howl and grabbed the gator and ran off into the woods. But it all happened in just a few moments. I'm not sure it was a dogman or something else like a werewolf. I would like to hear what you think on the matter. I still live in southern Louisiana, very close to Honey Island Swamp, and yes, I do have stories from there. Some of mine are some of my hunter's friends. I just seen a question on here asking about a positive encounter, and I have one I would like to share. Though it may not be what I thought. About 20 years ago, after I graduated high school, I used to run traps to make extra money in the wintertime. Since I was pregnant with my daughter, any sort of extra income was necessary, since trapping is frowned upon oddly. Anyway, my father had always told me about the creek I trapped in as being quite strange. We would always walk the creek to collect arrowheads and look for other Shawnee relics. So he would tell me stories about the Shawnee Native American tribe and their history and folklore. It was a very special spot to us. So when I began trapping, my father would tell me to have respect for the wildlife. Don't litter, kill humanely, and don't kill what doesn't need to be killed. So I built a great deal of appreciation to life, which led to my career in conservation the only reason I state these things is to build context as to why I did what I did. About once a week, while walking up the creek, I would hear whistling, like a human but in random patterns, and that would be along with the smell of sulfuric and rotten eggs, which my dad told me was most likely a Bigfoot or a skunk ape, and sightings had occurred as long as he could remember in our area. Then. One time I was scanning down the tree line with my binoculars to check to see if I had any coyotes and foxes in my traps to save me the walking time. I seen a fairly medium sized tree swing dramatically a little past the tree line. So I headed over there with my 22, hoping to sneak up on a bobcat or any animal that was medium sized my 22 could kill with a headshot. 
About three-fourths of the way to the tree line, the swaying had stopped, and I didn't see anything. But at least two of whatever it was began whistling and whooping further back in the forest. I continued to head up the creek, and it always stayed somewhat behind me at a distance, but never left. That was pretty interesting. Then, one day, sadly an oil fracking company purchased most of the land. They still gave me permission to trap, but they had a few accidents where the water got so damn nasty, it killed just about everything. It broke my heart to see beavers, muskrats, and some coons floating down the creek every time I went. But after they had installed their rigs and cleared some forest things, got a little hostile. One day, running traps almost all my traps had been ruined, bent, beaten, and broken. And the remained animals I had caught were either stolen, ripped from the trap with their foot or leg still attached, and I even found a coyote that had been messed up bad. Fur torn, broken lower jaw, head beaten in. I felt like this was in retaliation to what the oil company had done, and I was being blamed. But it is positive. For a few months afterwards, I would go to the store twice a week and buy a variety of apples, pears, and a mixture of meat from carcasses I had skinned, put it in a basket, and leave it in the forest, hoping whatever it was would get it before anything else. Sometimes the basket would disappear, but always in two days, everything was gone. One day, I believe it left me a present in return. Next to where I dropped off the basket, there was about 100 plus small sticks stacked very neatly, about 20 acorns and a deer antler. It made me feel happy. I do hope that I did help this creature out in its very sad moments of life, though it may have been everything but a Bigfoot or skunk ape because I never physically seen it or any tracks in the creek bed. But all of my occurrences happened in the woods along the creek, so I really don't know. So still to this day, 20 years later, I think of it time to time, and I don't see a reason why people should be afraid of them. It was a sad but positive two winter seasons with it, even if it was an animal I didn't recognize. I hope I helped. This happened when I was really young. I was around six to nine years old. A little backstory. I had a significant trauma happen to me when I was six. I don't want to go into details, but it made life difficult for a while. I totally shut down for a bit, and sleep at the time was my only safe haven. For the next couple of years after my incident, my dreams got stranger and stranger. I at first only saw them in the background of my dreams, like part of the scenery almost. Then I began to lucid dream. All of a sudden, these dark shadow people with red eyes began to manifest in my room. I never felt danger from them, and that gave me a sense of relief. I would talk to them like they were someone I knew, and I would tell them about my day. A lot of times, these conversations would end because they would hear something and move off my bed. I would wake from my semi-asleep state by trying to go after them. Towards the end of my encounters with these creatures, I got a sense of terror, and I could never pinpoint it until one night, a white figure came through my door and reached out with a knife toward me. I woke up with a jolt and never saw any of them again, though I will sometimes see one of them dart out of my vision. As I recall, I recently had to do a DoorDash delivery from Houston to a foresty suburb in Pasadena. I was driving down a dark forest road at 1am. I was feeling a little spooked because it was so damn dark on the road and empty. I honestly didn't even expect to do a delivery all the way from Houston to Pasadena, so I was annoyed, even though the pay was decent. All of a sudden, as I'm driving, some flying animal almost hits my dashboard and flies right past me as I'm driving. My reaction was from surprise to excitement, as I had just seen something crazy. From what I had seen, it was a bat, but about the size of my windshield. 
And to be honest, I have never seen such a huge bat in Texas to this very day. Any of you guys ever had encounters with abnormally larger humanoids? This is going to sound pretty unbelievable, but it scared the crap out of me. I used to live in this huge trailer house. It was 60 to 100 feet from front to back. That night, everyone else was sleeping in the front of the house since we didn't have school the next day. I decided to sleep in the back by myself. I'm not what you call a psychic, but I do seem to attract weird experiences. I was up late reading a book on spirits and getting rid of them. It was around midnight when I went to bed. All evening I had a growing feeling something was wrong. I was getting more and more uneasy, to the point where I was almost sick. I finally decided to go to bed and went to turn out the light. It turned off and laid in bed. In the room I used to have, the bathroom was right across the room, directly facing the bed. I turned around so my back was facing the bathroom. As soon as I did, I heard a growling behind me. It got closer and I heard footsteps with it. I felt this thing lean over me. I actually smelt its breath. I didn't directly see it though. I could have chalked it up to sleep paralysis except for one thing. As I was laying there, it either drooled or dropped some kind of sticky liquid on my head. It kept growling the whole time. Eventually, it stood up straight and I got the impression it was really tall, like 7 or 8 feet. I had laid there not doing anything and then all of a sudden, a sudden burst of courage come up and I decided to turn around. I did this to find nothing there. I remember seeing its ears leaning over me and the sulfur-like smell it gave off. I know I didn't dream it because when I got up, my hair was still wet and sticky from where it had drooled on me. I don't know what it was. Does anybody out there know? Some context. This happened like 10 years ago, on a hill southwest from Columbia. I'm skeptical about a lot of things, but this, I'm absolutely sure what I saw there was real. I was camping with my Boy Scout troop in a not so friendly place. Very, very hot. Really rough terrain. Awfully humid. Our troop was more likely military service than scout life. It was kind of far away from the main road, and the main base was in a tree-covered hill. I think that could be worth noted that it is less than 5 kilometers from an indigenous sacred site known as the Sacred Territory of the Creator, and probably it is a sacred site to, I don't know since the tribes that inhabited the area were forced by the Spanish to abandon their belief, traditions, and language, so there's a lot of things we don't know about them even I being a descendant of them. It was 3 p.m., and we sent three people to do the dishes after lunch. There was a small lagoon five to ten minutes downhill. It shouldn't take more than a half an hour for them to be back. An hour passes. They haven't came back. Knowing them, surely they're just having a trivial and boring gossip conversation, but as a patrol leader, I have to call them back. They didn't respond to whistles, so... I personally went downhill to find them. The way to the lagoon is mostly a two and a half foot path between a steep hill and a dry river with dense vegetation and closed curves. I was walking carelessly until I noticed something behind a curve. At first I thought it was a really massive vulture, but I felt uneasy so I started going back in silence until I steeped over a dry branch. After the crackling, the thing extended its wings, showing a very muscular humanoid back, and then a head that watched me. Then it took off with a sound more like a helicopter than a bird. Nonsense, I thought. There must be a rational explanation. Maybe it was just my imagination. I arrived to the lagoon and effectively, they were having the most boring and dumb of conversations. I told them to pack everything and started going back to the campsite. When all of the troop came out of the tree covered area, the lagoon is in a clear and told me that I was taking too long. My encounter with the birdman shouldn't have taken me more than 5 seconds or so I thought. 
Anyway, there was a very cocky boy in the troop that said, I'll go front, and entered alone in the woods. Five seconds later, I heard the same helicopter-like sound, and the boy came running from the woods, hyperventilating. Scouter, I saw a man with wings. Of course, everybody laughed, but I didn't say a word. This has left me feeling extremely shook, and I'd love some opinions, especially from somebody with experiences. Last year, I had a very strange experience in a national forest out in California. I was by myself on a road trip with my dog, and I was driving pretty far into the Mendocino National Forest. I like to camp in national parks and forests because it's isolated, so my dog can roam and they're free of charge. A trade-off for sketchy rough drives into the parks sometimes and a lack of service or assistance. Anyway, I was driving up this dirt road, kind of curling up a mountain around maybe 5 p.m. It was very nice out, sunny and warm with a slight breeze. Nothing serious had happened, but I felt extremely uncomfortable driving into the area that feeling did not let up. Driving up the mountain, I felt like I shouldn't stay there, and I even texted my boyfriend about it for as long as I could before my phone completely lost service. I was looking for a sign of another person, having been around the area lately, but didn't see anything. I pulled over and got out of my car with my dog to look over the edge and noticed a dead squirrel and some broken glass mixed in with the dirt and gravel. Yuck. My dog starts to growl slightly. She is vocal, but I've almost only ever seen or heard her growl at other dogs. I did see her growl at a possum once, so it could be something she smelt, maybe. This place continued to make me feel quite on edge, but I pride myself in being an independent traveler and backpacker, so I decided to continue at least a bit further with my grumbling pup to see if I could find a good place to camp. I continue to notice more dead animals. Keep in mind, no one is going to be more than 5 to 10 miles up this thing, and that's if there's anyone even there. I hear men's voices. They sound so close and I think I should call out to them. So I stop my car and then kind of freeze up and feel like I shouldn't. I can't really make out what they're saying, and I don't see any signs of people anywhere. And so I get back in my car and continue to slowly drive forward and cautiously look for where any voices could be coming from. I've never ran into other people in a national park or forest when I've gone this deep in. The unsettling feeling grows about the voices, which have sort of come and gone a few times. And I give up and begin to turn my car around. I honestly don't remember how my dog was acting on the way down. I was scared and focused on getting out of there. I just distinctly remember being surprised at her grumbling when we were standing outside of my car. Kind of dangerously quickly, I went back down the mountain, not seeing a sign of anyone. I decided to spring for luxury and get a hotel for the night. I figured I was just fine. Huge and open spaces can be intimidating, I told myself, and the voices could have been echoing from somewhere far off, and they just sounded close. Animals die. Glass gets broken. Nothing happened. Cool. But I remember this place. It sticks with me. Whenever I'm watching scary movies, if I'm walking my dog in the woods at night, nothing compares to the feeling I had driving up that mountain, and it's honestly kind of interesting to me as well as frightening. I recently happened across some information as well as some Native American lore that made me feel extremely uneasy. Fast forward a year, I've mentioned this place to a few people and the haunting vibes it gave me, but nothing much more. Googled the national park once and didn't see anything, but didn't look much either. I like scary movies and things of that nature, hence my fascination with this. So my boyfriend and I were coming up on finishing our road trip just yesterday. There were only two to three hours left and the sun had set, so we decided to listen to some scary podcasts and YouTube videos. We went from the No Sleep podcast to the X-Files and ended up on a True Stories video dealing with a Native American lore. I'm half paying attention, petting my dog, and playing Pokemon, and I hear the narrator mention Wendigos. 
very briefly says that they are and casually mentions that they can mimic voices. I mean it when I say the most horrible chills I have ever had in my life crawl down my spine. I stare at my boyfriend and ask him if he remembers that national forest that I was freaked out about last year. He says he does and he reminds me that he texted me. I was probably close to a Wendigo. I remember him saying that but didn't know much about their lore and thought he was just being funny like yeah Bigfoot is probably stalking you or some other dad joke. And he was like no, I mean I was mostly joking but I said it specifically because you said you were hearing voices that you couldn't find a trace of. I feel strange and I start googling Wendigos etc etc. They are allegedly able to mimic human voices and they would live up in that sort of area. It just all matched up. Obviously, there's a ton of questionable info out there, but I try to find more reputable websites and authentic experiences. I then specifically looked up missing persons in the area, and the first headline that catches my eye is, another family goes missing in Mendocino. And I went through different websites and news articles of people going missing, but they are all a little hidden underneath national park websites and pictures of trees. I remember looking up the forest about a year ago and didn't see anything and realized that these stories didn't seem to be talked about too much, which also piqued my intuition. It was stated that well over 100 people in the past 8 years have gone missing and never been found, on top of many which were found dead. It just has my intuition super spiked. Remembering how unsafe I felt and how much I wanted to get out of there terrifies me. I felt so uneasy about what I was hearing, and to this day, my dog and I are very close. She was a stray that started following me one day, and I ended up bringing her home from Costa Rica. So her little growls along the way, which makes me feel like there was something wrong. Even though it was just a storytelling video, those stories originate from somewhere. I have done a lot of solo traveling, both in and out of the country and I have never had such a bad feeling, on top of seeing an unnecessary amount of dead animals in a national forest, which just seems strange. I don't think I'll be doing any more solo traveling, unless it's around civilization. When I was 12, around 2005, I saw something that I still cannot explain. It was night, and I was lying on my bed, enjoying the wonders of three-way calling, when something outside caught my eye. My bed had a window, about two feet away from it, and I could see the tree outside my house very clearly from the head of my bed. As I ignored my friends, I looked out of my window and watched in shock as a tall, metallic, light blue creature leapt from the base of the tree onto one of the middle branches. Now, there's no way in hell that a branch about three inches in diameter could hold a creature of this size. It was over six feet tall, smooth skin, muscular build, and strangely shaped facial features. As I lied there, in a mixture of shock and awe, the creature just crouched on the branch, watching me curiously. I didn't feel any fear, just a bit shocked at what I was seeing. After about 15 to 20 minutes of watching this thing sit there, it lifted its head and let out a call that sounded like if a duck was quacking underwater and jumped down from its perch. I watched it as it casually crawled back into the tree line and disappeared. I've never seen it again, but it's something that has always stuck with me. I'm hoping someone may have a similar experience or some insight as to what I witnessed that night. Its head was proportionate to its body, but it appeared to have a short snout. Also, that leap would have been about 15 feet high, and it did it with ease. I lived in the same house until 2015, and I would very frequently walk about a quarter of a mile to my friend's house at night. The path was a dirt path, and on the right side, directly next to the trail, was a heavily wooded area. To the left was an open field that was against a canyon full of springs and trees. Some nights, I could feel that creature nearby and instead of frightening me, it would put me at ease. Leadville, Colorado, October 29, 1880 
for some time past the miners in the vicinity of Grizzly Peak, about 40 miles southeast of this city, have reported the presence of a strange animal different from anything known in the mountains. On a number of different occasions, a creature resembling a man, save for the extraordinary length of the arms and the long shaggy hair that covered this body, has been seen at a distance among the rocks. At first, its existence was supposed to be a myth, and the miners who brought in the story were hooted at and generally disbelieved. Finally, however, there were so many witnesses that it became undeniable that it was fact, that a wild animal totally different from anything known to science or natural history existed somewhere amidst the rocky layers of the adjoining mountains. Let me first clarify that this was four years ago, when I was 15 on a muzzleloader's mule deer hunt in the far northeastern part of Utah, which contains some of the most remote and beautiful places in the state. I've been frequently in and out of this area, spreading in Summit County that cuts in and out of Lower Wyoming, since before I can remember, including lots of hiking, backpacking, camping, hunting, and being involved in some of my grandfather's work. I am skeptical of things not proven by methods of science, but I don't deny all of those things. I find that it's impossible for science to know of all that is out there in our vast world. My grandfather is a recently retired biologist and former conservation officer for the state, and was a regional specialist and was over wildlife and habitat management for many years. He's taken everything from habitat management programs which is like controlled fires to benefit areas, to quite literally wrangling moose to be transplanted and darting black bears. He has seen mountain lions, bears, birds of all kinds, small mammals, plants, and natural phenomena for a majority of his life. And he understands so much that many people, including myself, will never be able to even imagine. He's scientific, honest, straightforward, level-headed. He's agnostic and is not superstitious, and often used to, lovingly and respectfully, tease a certain CO who thinks certain Bigfoot, skinwalkers, and other beings exist. Other than that, his experience, he has never encountered an animal that he could not at least partially identify, other than the natural innate fear of being in close quarters with a bear, drunken and belligerent hunter, or incredibly potent tranquilizer medication. He's told me over and over he's never been terrified of an animal or experience like this, only curious or surprised. It was late September and we were in a small camp by a lake in the high Uinta Mountains, hunting both grouse and mule deer with muzzleloaders. The camp was a small collection of men and women my grandfather had worked with over the years as supervisor slash biologist slash CO. And these were people I grew up with. One of the women, a new wife to one of the guys had shot a buck deer, injuring but not killing it immediately, and they had lost track of it. Devastated by the thought of wasting the animal, she returned to camp in the afternoon upset and concerned that the deer had run into an even more secluded area of the mountain, which was hard to reach from the trail that she had shot from, a place my grandfather was familiar with because it was such a pain in the ass to get to, with lots of deadfall and steep terrain. We volunteered to go in the late afternoon to search for the deer, following a scant blood trail that she had tracked for a while before getting fatigued and intimidated by the terrain. Because both my grandfather and I were in good shape and he was so familiar, it didn't seem like a big deal. Before we left, she mentioned hearing what she assumed was coyotes, which made her even more so concerned that if the deer died, they would ruin the meat and hide before she could harvest it. We took off in the early evening, expecting to be back within an hour or two after searching and having our guns with us, in case we found the animal still alive or came across another buck worth trying to harvest. It was steep in places, with lots and lots of deadfall of varying heights making the hike slower and more tedious than we had hoped, making us understand the other hunter's fatigue. She had marked the blood trail with bright orange pieces on the trees, which we followed for maybe 20 minutes, and then got it hard to track. The sun was getting close to setting at this point, 
and we knew getting out would be just as long getting in. We had just about decided to stop when we found a spot near a fallen tree that looked like it had been recently bedded down in, followed with splatters of fairly fresh blood, and we continued for longer. When the sun had just about set and the light had faded from the trees, we removed the firing caps from our guns to make them now completely safe as it was now illegal and irresponsible to hunt in such absence of decent light. My grandfather pulled out his large mag light flashlight from his pack, and I put in my headlamp to begin the hike back, using our GPS to find the trailhead. About ten minutes on the way back, we started to hear more movement among the trees. It was normal for animals to start moving now that the sun had gone down, as animals would likely be starting to head towards the clearings for water, or to graze in the safety of lower light. Small and distant sounds of crunching leaves, patterings of hooves, animals or small bits of movement in the trees from squirrels or birds were common and expected. We did not expect the deafening, disturbing sound we heard next, which vaguely and initially reminded me of a coyote howl. But by a few seconds in, it was an identifiable, frightening and human-like. It started with what sounded like a person screaming, but then got louder and more intense with a screech quality to it, so unlike any coyote or any animal we have ever heard. Then was the almost chattering that came in between the shrieks, and the movement of trees became almost calculated, almost threatening. We stopped dead in our tracks, frozen as my grandfather started using the light to look around. I was far more freaked out than him at this point. He just seemed perplexed, curious, and a little baffled at what could make that sound. It sounded human, but with no words, with no urge of tone of help or I'm just screaming to mess with you. We continued on after it mostly stopped, and it seemed like the other, natural and distant sounds had gone almost silent. I listened intently to the sound of my boots crunching with the dry aspen leaves underfoot, trying to tell myself that it was just some weird coyote with a horrible deformed larynx or something. Maybe 20 minutes from the main trail that would lead us to the truck, we heard the chittering sound again and sounds of thumping against dead trees. Looking around with our lights in between deadfall, maybe 12 to 15 feet in front of us, was a large human looking thing. It was almost hunched down with a long, slender arm around the front of a standing aspen. The aspen, of course, was pale white, with the knots being dark brown, and whatever it was had skin almost as pale. I caught a very brief glimpse of its face. It seemed round and the eyes seemed sunken, and I could not tell you eye color other than a flash of reflection on the eye from my light, and that its face seemed sunken and emaciated. I didn't see any fur or hair. I never felt like it looked right at me, more my grandfather and just in our direction, almost confused and curious, like he was before with the sound. For a mere couple of seconds, I caught a glimpse of it, but that was it. I looked down at the ground, holding my eyes shut, trying to imagine being safe and secure in the truck, and my grandfather took a few stumbling steps backward toward me. I heard the thing go off to our side, moving quickly and with purpose through the trees, to the side and then dropped down behind us. I would assume according to the sound, of course, but I hope it went in the opposite direction. My grandfather turned to where it had veered off, as to follow it, but he soon stopped and looked at me. I had never before and never since seen him so confused, baffled, horrified, curious, and in awe. I was crying at this point, ugly crying, trying to muffle my shaking breath and voice, and I asked him, what was that? Over and over I asked, and he had no answer for me. He pulled his gun off his shoulder and put a cap back on the nipple of the igniter, making the gun live and he then carried it in front of his body in his arm. He pulled out another headlight to put on himself. We started walking again towards the trail as he listed off like talking to himself as to what it wasn't. Things like, couldn't have been a deer or elk or moose. It had arms. It was hunched. It stood upright. Or a bear? A very sick bear. It could have been a bear. Was it the light? We heard the sound, the screeching human howl distantly once more, before reaching the trail, which was dirt and gravel, but fairly flat and no deadfall. We practically jogged to the truck. 
I locked the doors immediately and sobbed, and my grandfather turned on music as loud as possible to try and distract me on the way back to camp. I was a mess when we arrived back, and he went to talk with the others by the fire when he got me settled in my sleeping bag in my bunk. He explained to some of his friends, but I don't know what all was said. The next day, everyone was extra sweet to me, trying to comfort me and saying it was probably a sick animal that looked scary in the dark. The deer the hunter shot was found the next day, in the daylight, scavenged quite harshly by what I assume was coyotes. To this day, he has no clue what it was, nor what that sound was. And before and since, I've heard both coyote and many other animal sounds that never even compared to that sound. The scientist in me, and in him, the hopeful and blissfully ignorant people in us hope and speculate it was just a deformed, sick animal in scant light. But I still have no clue what that thing was, and I hope I never experience it again. Oh, and to give a little extra detail before I forget, it seemed tall. It wasn't small in stature. Even though it was sort of hunched down and over, its torso and arms seemed long, and based on the length of arms, it had to be tall or else its arms would be dragging length on the ground. It was bony. It truly looked emaciated, like an animal that hadn't eaten in a long time, or that was ill. Its skin looked anemic and unlike a person. I couldn't tell much of a green or blue undertone in the arm or face that would sort of indicate superficial veins. It looked dehydrated. I don't remember getting a good look at its hands, but its arms were thin, as well as lanky, I don't remember seeing ears, and remember that its mouth was sort of small. I don't even think its mouth was open. Unlike a human, it didn't have lips or pigment to its cheeks. Its head was tilted slightly up, which is because I think my grandpa was slightly closer than I was. Its neck seemed longer than a human's, and the tendons of the neck seemed to be pretty obvious. Like if a thin person extended and flexed the neck, you can see the tendons and delicate musculature. Its eyes, they seemed sunken and set back, hollow almost. There was that very distinct flashback of light from its eyes, which is because of the thin membrane just behind animals' retinas. Humans do not have this biological feature. Once I saw it, I shortly after began crying because not only was I creeped out, but because of the sounds we had heard and the fact that I felt my beloved grandfather and I were vulnerable to it but because I was disturbed by how unfamiliar and unnatural it was. While in high school, I worked at a vet clinic as a veterinary technician and have seen sick animals, large and small. I've seen animals hit by cars. I've seen them cut up and torn up, anemic infected with parasites or mange. I've worked on animals just before death, and I've seen animals dead. I've seen animals during necropsy and have also seen wild animals hurt dead or sick. This was like all the weirdest and most disturbing attributes of a hurt, dead or sick animal, sort of balled into one disturbing being. I think that is why I was so upset, because I could not have understood what it was, and how something so disturbingly dead and lifeless looking could be standing there looking at us, breathing and living and curious about us. I'm a person of science, like yourself it sounds like, so none of this made sense to me. Science is safety. Logic is safety, at least to me. If it was a black bear or elk or mountain lion, I would have known how to react. I would have known if it was dangerous. Honestly, I still hike and hunt up there, but when I think about it, it scares me half to death. A scared animal that felt cornered, trapped, threatened, or even territorial probably would have, and I think that given its stature, it would be able to at least scare us off and do minor damage if physically it felt threatened. The next point I want to make here is if this, if it was predatory, it could have gone one or two ways. One, if it wanted to hunt, kill, or eat us, it could have attacked us and tried. Two, if it was predatory and wanted to hunt, kill, eat us, it could have decided not to because of many reasons. There were two of us. We weren't very small and we weren't injured. We had lights and a gun or a weapon, or some sort of large protective object. We weren't what it typically goes after, or it had already been satisfied with a different animal. Look, obviously it didn't attack us, but both of the options are terrifying to me. We were in fact alone, 
secluded and without our weapons and lights, probably not too dangerous to it. This disturbs and horrifies me. But I also wonder if this thing is what so many others have seen. Why has nobody been hurt? I wish I could debunk, discredit, or even explain away what we saw that night, but I can't. So, I've been seeing this super tall and skinny thing in doorways and running in halls. It's like a white, fleshy color and has rather sunken facial features. It seems to be more afraid of me than I am of it. Or maybe it just doesn't want to be caught. Or could it be something else? I've spent most nights not worrying about it, but it's showing up a lot more, almost braver each time. If anyone knows anything about it that could give me more insight so I could get some more detail, please say. I seen it again today and it paralyzed me in fear to the point of tears upon it holding a stare. I've declared that I know it's there and want it gone and that it's not welcome. It looks like the rake, no joke. My sister thinks it might be a skinwalker. I've read a bit about them and it worries me as to where it's coming from and where it goes. Also, why it's after me and no one else but me and my sister are seeing it. I'm posting on behalf of my boyfriend and two of his experiences and one of my own. A few years back, my boyfriend was on his job site and he called me late explaining that he had seen something that looked like it was trying to cloak itself but failing to, kind of glitching in a way. It was near a hedge and he told me he could clearly see the outline of what appeared to be a human figure. He said it was there and then it was gone almost as soon as he looked away. I have had reoccurring dreams of seeing through or mirror people that have become unsettling and stressful to the point I don't want to sleep, and this has only been happening recently, the last two months. They are basically the same. I'm in the river near my home, surrounded by these beings or creatures, and I feel very vulnerable and scared. It's so realistic it's almost like a lucid dream or an OBE. Very strange and happens weekly. The topping that made me want to post this is that last night, my boyfriend had seen this very weird translucent thing again after years of not seeing it or even thinking of it. Now, I haven't told him about my dreams and still don't plan to just as of yet, and I find this timing to be so odd and a bit frightening. I'm a huge believer in almost all otherworldly things, so I am a little bit on edge. He said it was by our back hedge against the fence and there was a clear outline of where it was standing. He said it glimmered and its body kind of waved. He described it as looking at a reflection of our hedge in the water. He has been backing up slowly from it and when he glanced away for a second, it was gone. He then came into the room and woke me up and I'll admit, he looked really concerned and a bit terrified. He's not really one to believe in these things. Has anyone had any experiences or have heard such things? I found one article with a Google search of a few witness accounts of almost identical creatures, but nothing truly substantial. I'm very curious about this and am dying to figure out what it could be. This happened about 10 years ago when I lived in Limestone, a small town in Maine. For reference, I lived in a small apartment complex completely surrounded by forest. It was very quiet and lots of wildlife roamed the fields and forests surrounding the complex. I was eight years old, lying on the top bunk of my bed, looking out my window. There was a spider that would build her web right outside my window so I would always watch her build her web at night before I went to sleep. My window overlooked a parking lot that was right next to a field bordering a thick forest. One night, I was watching Mrs. Spider build her web, as I always do, when I see this very tall, ape-like thing with a long, thick tail that tapered at the end, kind of like how you would imagine a T-Rex tail, except Harry, if that's a good comparison, walking across the parking lot I kept watching as it wandered into a field just before the forest. 
It then placed itself between two other trees, about arm's length away from each other, and began climbing up by grabbing the two opposite trees with its respective hands and feet, and slowly shimmying up the tree. As it made it to the tops of the trees, it sort of blended in with them and stopped moving, and I couldn't see it anymore. To this day, I am completely stumped as to what I saw from my apartment window. So, I've lived in a quiet, walkable neighborhood for about a year and a half now. My job is about 10 minutes from my apartment, so I always walk. I'm a chef, so I get out pretty late. First encounter. Walking home and at the crossroad where I turned and I saw a man walking perpendicular to me. The man stopped and looked at me. I was maybe one block away. The man then walked behind a telephone pole and completely disappeared. Could have just been me not seeing where he went, but the whole thing gave me an odd feeling. Second encounter. Maybe six months later. Same crossroad, same distance, same time of night. This one was way weirder. There was a woman standing on the top of an 8-foot orange A-frame ladder in the middle of the intersection, looking up at the sky, hand over her eyes like she was blocking sunlight. The moment I see her, she slowly comes down off her ladder and picks it up. She started walking away with it, and I followed her as she was walking the same route I take to get home. Slowly, I was catching up to her, but when she took a corner, all of a sudden, she was gone. I took the same corner less than 10 seconds after her. There was nowhere she could have put the ladder that quick. Hi everyone. I would like to share this story. I've heard about two men who supposedly lived in the Develis Cave in Penteli, Athens, Greece. Some people from the area have said they've encountered them close to the forest and the cave. Well, I need to tell you that there's a lot of theories about this cave, about other dimensions, and the fact that you can actually travel somewhere else through here. Even UFO sightings, people losing their memory, there's the phenomenon of negative gravity, which is amazing. There's so much electromagnetic activity. So people who claim seeing them said the men always walk with their hands behind their back, and whoever saw them thought they didn't have hands. But if you took a look from the back, you could see their hands were bird-like, like claws. They never spoke, almost like they couldn't, and they were very tall and pale. Now, could this really be just a spooky story? But if it's not, what do you think they could be? Could they really be from a different dimension? Or their entities? Or just people who were born like this? There's also sightings of angels and ghosts on the area. So maybe it's all illusions from the huge electromagnetic energy field. Also, another fact about the cave is that the compasses go crazy there. And during 1977, they said the army actually did some experiments there. And after the 1990s Satanist actually went there for, you know, their satanic rituals. I was on the Little Miami bike trail heading back to Murrow from Oregonia, mile marker 235. It was Sunday, April 12th, around 5 in the afternoon. Since the COVID restrictions were enacted a week or two prior, the trail had become so crowded every day of the week. However, a cold front came in, and it was cool, cloudy day, and very few people on the trail. Maybe 15 to 20 riders encountered from Oregonia to Kings Mill. Well, maybe more, but not bad. I'm retired and ride this route nearly daily, weather permitting. So, after passing under the former Jeremiah Morrow Bridge, I-71, over Little Miami River, there's a long, gentle arc in the trail. I haven't seen a soul since I turned around at Wilmington Road. I'm cruising. It's nice and quiet. When suddenly... I heard a loud knock, so distinct that I instantly said in my head, that was a knock. It came from atop the hill to the east. I pondered all of the conditions, kids playing, not, cold, remote, and they don't play in woods anymore, adults messing around, maybe? But how would they know I was there? Natural, 
very doubtful. I'm nearly 68 and never heard anything so crisp, clearly, like a Louisville slugger full speed against a barkless, solid ash tree, or so I imagined. There, that's what happened. I look online to see if any Bigfoot sightings had been reported in this area and found none. I stored the incident away until last weekend when I was talking to my son. He's 46 in May, and I raised him near Murrow, abuting the former Frisch Farms in the 3C Highway. Our school district includes the Mainville area, and one of his good friends lived on a hillside at a 90-degree curve on Sickby Road. His friend, Chris Flick's older brother, told Nick, 20 years ago, he and his dad both saw a Bigfoot walking through the woods on the opposing hillside two different times. Nick said he never related this until he told me, because of my knock story, of course. He said he'll never forget it, and because of his story, I tell you my story. I was driving down Willard Road around 5 p.m. as I came around the last right-hand corner looking toward the straightaway to the junction with Cook Underwood Road. I saw a black object in the road. I thought it was a bear and the largest bear I have ever seen. It took up the whole left lane of the road and it was huge. It looked like the butt was raised up. I figured it could be a 600 pound bear in my mind. Then I saw this commotion going on, like something moving up and down, all black. A bear will run or lumber across the road. At the time, I thought I have never seen a bear do this. I thought this could be several deer or elk walking in the road. I was confused about all the motion going on. Then as it approached, the creature and the creature approached the edge of the bank. It popped up. I yelled out, it's a man. What is a man doing out here in the woods this time of night? It stepped onto the bank and walked into the woods. As my mind was trying to figure out what I saw, I saw the whole body and the head. The right leg stepped onto the bank, left arm back, no hat, no coat, no clothes. There was no snout or ears like a bear. Yes, a cone-like head, tall, arms longer, legs bulky. My headlights lit it up. By the time I passed it, it had disappeared into the woods, and by the time I reached Cook Underwood Road, about 600 feet, I knew what I saw, but was still just trying to process it. I went back on Sunday to see if I could see prints, but it had rained hard all night and I saw no prints. I still see the creature in my mind. Later, as my mind was processing what I saw, I knew it had to be arms and legs going up and down as it crossed the road, and also it was actually crawling, then stood up by the bank, but it was so fast like it popped up. Still hard for me to believe what I saw, but I believe it was a Sasquatch. I also now believe as I approached it when my headlights came upon it, it turned back towards the headlights and scrunched its face because the headlights were in its eyes then turned and faced into the woods and walked off. Backstory Towards the tail end of the summer of 2018, my family was house-sitting for my cousin in North Carolina. The house itself is very large, so the kitchen living room is right next to the kitchen. Like kitchen can be seen from the living room fully, which had a hallway that wraps around the master bedroom and back down to the living room. Next to the living room was a staircase to the loft where me and my sister were sleeping. And in the living room, there was a door to a balcony, deck that overlooked the river. It had huge windows that let you see the balcony. On this night, me and my mom stayed up till 1 a.m. watching Law & Order, but went to our rooms around 1. Okay, we were staying for eight days and this happened on the fifth night. I could not sleep because I felt like something was watching me and at around 4 a.m. I heard a shriek like nothing I've ever heard before. So an hour later I decided to see if I could sleep on the couch in the living room. I noticed that I kept hearing paws walk up and down the hallway I mentioned. I go, okay, it's just their cute little dog, except that she is laying on the other side of the couch 
where I see her while the footsteps are going. Then, I hear the most guttural noise I've ever heard. It was like a growl and a scream mixed into one. So at that point, I freeze. I close my eyes and pretend to be asleep. After about 20 minutes, the sun rises. I ain't no idiot, so I run to the kitchen and get the biggest flipping knife there is to look around. Nothing out of the ordinary, except I look out the window onto the balcony. The windows were fogged up as it had been raining last night, and clear as day, written on the window through the condensation, was the word hi. This happened a few years back. It was midwinter, had snowed heavily the day prior, and was cold as hell. I decided to take my husky out to the woods since he loves the snow and the cold weather, and I love the scenery. The trip was uneventful, to say the least. Took our usual trip to a nearby field and started to head back home. But this time, instead of our typical way back, I decided to go off course and go into the denser part of the woods. My intent was to enjoy myself more of the snowy forest, but it quickly took a more sinister path. As we were walking back home, I noticed rabbit snow prints appearing out of a nearby hole in the snow, which stretched for about 10 meters onto a nearby tree. As I got closer, I noticed that the rabbit's trail had disappeared. I looked behind the tree and found that there was human snow prints, barefoot human snow prints. I followed the trail again. Meanwhile, my dog is barking and pulling me in the opposite direction. They looked like the person making them was drunk or had never had feet before. They swerved zigzag-like, probably 30 meters after appearing the human feet turn into hooves and continue to trail off. Now at this point, I'm scared shitless, confused and unnerved while my dog is next to me, barking and trying to pull me away. I just start booking it back to my house. That's basically it. I just wanted to share it and maybe hear somebody's thoughts about what it could have been. I live in Eastern Europe, so I don't think it could have been a skinwalker. To give some background, my family owns a trailer home which sits on a cliff overlooking Lake Katune in the south of the Canadian province of British Columbia. This trailer was used as a sort of summer getaway destination as my parents and I visit for about a week or more each summer. The trailer itself is quite old. It was turned into a home by the previous owners in the 70s. But despite its age, it's still a very enjoyable place to experience the warmest months. The trailer sits in the middle of a cedar pine forest with a small clearing on the side facing away from the water to park vehicles, as well as a driveway connecting to the road which is about 110 feet away. The nearest town is roughly a 15 minute drive and there are no neighbors. I sleep at the opposite end of the trailer, which I call the cabin, as there is an additional dining room and porch built onto the trailer. With their bed at the front end and mine at the very back end, there are two windows next to where I sleep, with one facing parallel to the lake and the other towards the previously mentioned parking area. Due to the positioning of our cabin in the mountain valley, around 9 p.m. in the summer, it gets very, very dark very quickly. Since we sometimes are outside after this time, there's a bright lamp mounted on the front end of the trailer which completely illuminates the porch area facing the lake and partially lights the parking area, creating an orange glow that can get spooky, especially when raining. I hope the backstory wasn't too long, but it might help you get a sense of the surroundings. Around 11 p.m. one night, I was still awake, sitting in bed and reading. I keep the blinds of the window facing away from the lake, open as to provide a little light for reading without having to turn on any inside lamps. The light momentarily gets dimmer, so I glance outside. What I saw was a large, almost glowing white creature which moving through the semi-lit area, casting a shadow over my window. It had very long and spindly limbs, and I could see some contours that looked like emaciated ribs on its side. It was hard to estimate a height because it was moving bent over, and what I can only describe as a crawl. 
Just looking at it instilled so much fear that I couldn't look away, despite how much I wanted to. The creature moved at a fast walking pace from the front of the cabin and into the tree line. At the same time, I wanted to believe that there was some form of very, very sick, hairless bear, as we frequently saw bears in the area. Looking back, the limbs were just too long to be a bear, and far too skinny. Also, I would think a bear with mange would still have some hair or even discolored skin, but this creature did not. It appeared entirely to be a white color, and the light from the lamp reflected off its side, making it glow a little. I wish I could provide any form of evidence that what I saw really happened, but ultimately, it's you, the reader's choice whether to believe me or not. When I have a moment, I'll draw a diagram to detail its movement in relation from where I was looking. Thanks for listening. Six months ago, I decided to take a late evening hike on the Monte Sano Mountain in Huntsville, Alabama. It was a typical hike, about three miles on a looping trail that I am very familiar with. About halfway through, I had the most sudden jolt of absolute terror and doom, like someone close to me had died, and or that I was fixing to die, followed by immediate, the most tired I have ever been, pure exhaustion. It was getting dark, and I did everything in my power to stop moving, but the exhaustion was just too much that I dipped off the trail and a bit found out my bag down against a tree, leaned against it, and dozed off. It was one of those I can hear everything around me kind of sleeps, where you aren't really sure if you're asleep or not asleep. I began to hear what sounded like people walking quickly towards me, breaking branches and rustling leaves. I open my eyes and the sound immediately stops and I'm overwhelmed by the feeling that whatever was walking was now not moving because it was watching me. I stay frozen aside from removing my EDC. For the next 10 minutes, I sit dead still, looking towards the direction the sound was initially coming from. As it continues getting darker, I make the decision to stand and move towards the trail so I don't get lost in that exact moment and I stand up. Here, the movement again, except this time, it seems to be going the opposite direction, and much quicker I run towards the sound to try and just get a glimpse from the top of a ravine. I then see what appears to be a massive white dog running on all fours, about 75 yards away from me. I whistle the loudest I can, and it immediately freezes, stands up on its back two legs, and begins walking around and looking in my general direction. I was absolutely terrified and took off running. As I'm running, I could hear whatever this was running alongside me, still 75 yards or so away, until it hits a massive drop off, which is an area called Three Caves. I'm on the trail going down towards my vehicle, and I hear the craziest, almost human-like scream growl that I've ever heard echoing from the top of the drop-off where the caves is located at. I immediately get in my vehicle and take off. I have no clue what this was. I'm not the type to BS a story or see things that aren't there or any of this, so it's all weird to me. I have began re-hiking and watching these areas as well as looking for signs of the monster and will update you as my progress is made. I should clarify when I say hunting I don't mean I plan to kill whatever this is, but I would like to get a picture of it or more evidence. All right, just to preface, I'm on mobile, so I'm sorry for formatting, but I live in Southern Indiana, right on the border to Kentucky. I live in a small town, right smack in the middle, but we still have lots of wooded areas, parks, etc. My roommate works at McDonald's and he sent me a message, clearly shook. He's telling me he saw a skinwalker. I'm not into that at all, so he explains what that is. He tells me he saw the big white mass, probably the size of a dog, so I assume coyotes of course, go around some plants outside. He goes to check and to his surprise, a black dog, not a single light spot on its body. 
he said the dog didn't even acknowledge him as it walked away. Well, fast forward a few days to today, I'm coming home from work about midnight and I see this big white blur across the road outside my apartment. My thought is, oh hey, a dog. So I park and I go across the road to the bushes that I saw it run into and I find a black cat that looks off as soon as I come over. No sign of it being a big white dog. When I was a kid, I lived in a place called Black Hammock Island in Jacksonville, Florida. I always had the curtains in my bedroom open at night to let the natural moonlight in. One night, I was sitting against my closet door which was opposite my window. The light was off and I was on my phone. The reason I was sitting there was because there was only one working outlet in my room next to the closet and I needed to charge my phone. I looked up and saw what looked like a pair of glowing golden eyes that were like a pointed oval shape and they slanted down towards the middle. They were huge. At first I thought it was somehow a reflection of light as I had my phone on and a nightlight plugged in the same outlet. So I unplugged it and turned my phone screen off. When I realized that it looked like eyes and wasn't a light reflection, I got up and ran out of my room immediately and banged on my grandparents' bedroom door. When I told them about it, they told me it was probably an animal. The thing is, our house was not directly on the ground, but it was propped up on tall stacks of bricks. It was a portable home. It was way too high for something like a bear, which I'm pretty sure doesn't have those types of eyes anyway. There was nothing that an owl could have been perched up on, and the eyes were way too big for that either. The eyes, for the short time I saw them before running out of my bedroom, were staring right at me unblinkingly. To this day, I'll never sleep with my curtains open, and I still have no idea what that could have been. Does anyone have any ideas on what I saw that night? I have an encounter from my childhood that has stuck with me forever. It was such a strange experience, I don't really know what it was, or certain what happened, but I am 100% that I saw what I saw. I grew up in suburban Missouri, right around the St. Louis area. There was one summer night when I was 11 or 12 when I was out riding my bike with a friend in my neighborhood. We rode until 9pm, and at this point, it was just a little past dusk. So, we headed back to my house. It wasn't pitch black since the sun had just set, so we could still see pretty well. My friend rode ahead of me, and because she wanted to call some other girl to have her come over, and I stayed back to pet a dog. The dog left, and I started riding my bike again, and I looked across the street and saw a chunky black humanoid figure that was maybe 10-ish feet tall, all black and it was standing next to a ranch-style house, touching the branches on the tree next to it. I fell off my bike as soon as I saw it, but never felt scared or anything. I watched it for a couple of minutes, but it could have only been like 30 seconds. You know how dumb kids' brains work with time. As it was just looking at this tree, it was quiet and I never heard a sound come out of its mouth, and even if it took a step, I couldn't hear anything. It just decided to walk back into the small wooded area behind the house, and I never saw it again. It was an amazing experience, and I have such a positive emotion associated with it. I just have no clue what I saw that night. This happened the summer of 2016. I was staying at my grandparents' house for just a few weeks in the summer while my mother was on vacation. They live near Grand Junction, Colorado. Their house is by a large river, and the whole area has a shit ton of trees, plant life, and animals. I was letting my dog out to go potty one night, and there's hardly any lights around the property, so I grabbed a flashlight. My dog is outside for maybe a minute before I hear her start viciously growling and barking like I've never heard before. She's growled and barked at animals or people outside before, but this was more aggressive than I'd ever heard her. I start making my way over to my dog to investigate. I make it about halfway to my dog, and I freeze dead in my tracks. 
I am pointing my flashlight in the direction she's facing, and I see the most unsettling thing I've ever seen. At first, I think I'm just imagining it, or tripping out, but there was no denying it. It was clear as day. What I was looking at was about three to four feet tall, a rectangular figure, but with rounded edges. Imagine like a four foot tall Twinkie. It was this gross, translucent, tan flesh color, like the color of a naked mole rat. There was no apparent face or limbs. All I saw was a bunch of tentacle leg looking things protruding all the way down the front and side of its body. The way it was moving was creepy. At first it was sort of gently rocking side to side, and then I swear it started taunting my dog, like running from one spot to another, just to mess with her. At this point, I got too scared, and it would do something to my dog, so I ran to her, snatched her up and booked it inside, and locked the door. When I peeked back outside, the thing was gone. I don't think anything has ever disturbed me that much in my real life. My body wouldn't stop shaking for probably 25 minutes after I got inside. The most messed up part is the next day I told my aunt that I saw a weird alien bug looking creature outside the night before. She then said, I've seen some weird shit out here too, and proceeded to explain seeing the exact same thing I saw. Same color, shape. Lots of tentacle, centipede-looking appendages, and the icing on the cake for me was when she said it kept rocking from side to side. I said, you're kidding me, that's exactly what I saw last night. We both got chills and flipped out because it confirmed it was not our imagination, but reality. I had a rather odd encounter with some humanoid creature, or even spirit possibly, just a few nights ago, and I haven't been able to come up with a rational answer to just what I had seen. I suppose I will start with the story now. It happened just a few nights ago, when I was biking home from work. I work the closing shifts for my local Walgreens, so I get off work around 10.30. I live only 30 minutes away by bike from my job, but most of the way home is by a heavily forested trail, which doesn't have very many streetlights to begin with so it's always pitch black when I'm going home. Well, about five minutes-ish into the bike ride going home, I hit the beginning of where the streetlights end and the darkness begin. And like I always do, I pull out my phone and turn on the flashlight option so I could illuminate my way home. Well, only a few seconds later, after I turned it on, I tilted it up more and froze because I saw this tall, skinny, pale looking figure for just a brief second before it fell onto all fours like the wind was gone into the woods. Shortly after, I started to pedal as fast as I could because I had no clue what it was I had seen when I heard a low screech and whatever it was kept pacing with me hidden in the woods out of sight. I managed to get out of that area very quickly and didn't see or hear anything after I left that heavily wooded area. But a while later, I caught a scent of what literally smelt like fresh blueberry pancakes or waffles, like as if somebody was standing out in the field with a hot plate of just the pan of blueberry waffles or pancakes, which didn't make sense to me as there are no buildings in the area where that scent was. So I figured perhaps whatever it was I had seen was possibly using scents to try and draw me into the fields or woods. Now. I do know a few areas around the trail are supposedly haunted. There's a dinner theater that's not far from it, and a supposed haunted water tower in the area too, and a couple of other places. But I still, no matter what I think of, I can't rationalize it or even debunk it as something else. Couldn't be a deer because I've talked to people around the area, and no one has seen a deer ever in the area. And besides, it was standing on two feet when I saw it, like it was a humanoid. Couldn't have been another wildlife because the only wildlife I have ever spotted are squirrels and birds. But I figured I would share my experience and see if anyone has had something similar or may know a possible rationalized explanation for what I could have seen. The 
The following story you are about to hear is 100% true. Parts of the story might sound like it's from a movie, but I assure you, it all happened on the way it was to this day, and it's still a mystery of what actually happened. It was the last few minutes of class before school ended for spring break. As me and my best friend Josh were waiting for the bus to pull up to take us home, we started to talk about what we wanted to do for spring break. We talked all the way from home, playing basketball, working out, to even building our own go-karts out of scraps that his grandfather had in his old beat-down shed out back. When we finally arrived at our destination, getting ready to step off the bus, our other friend Kimberly stopped us and asked us if we could all meet up a little later that night. See, we all lived in the same area, so we decided to meet up around 11 o'clock so our parents would think we were in bed. Later that night, before we snuck out of our houses, we called Kimberly and asked where she wanted to meet at. We all decided to meet up at a little crossroads section, about four miles out from where we lived. The only problem is it's all single gravel road, surrounded by thick woods that stretches about 15 miles to the nearest highway. So, naturally, we were a little scared to begin with to walk by ourselves in the dead of the night in the middle of nowhere. On the way there, me and my friend Josh were talking about the old haunted slave shack that still resigned since the 1800s, about a mile to the left of where we were meeting at. As we pressed forward, my friend and I started feeling like we were being watched from a distance. Shrugging it off, we continued down the old creepy road, still talking about the slave shack. We noticed a shooting star that zoomed by the night sky. This is where the night would haunt us forever. We continue down the gravel road, still talking, when all of a sudden, we see two more shooting stars, then another, and another, until it looked like a machine gun was shooting stars from it. We were amazed by what we had just seen, but we finally reached our destination, seeing Kimberly sitting on the patch of grass on the side of the road. We all hugged and just sat there, talking about what we are going to do during spring break. Hours have passed, and it's now 3 a.m. in the morning, still sitting and still talking. Then out of nowhere, this unusually large dog approached us. It was a very sweet, loving, kind dog, not usual for a stray. I decided to get up and stretch my legs while Kimberly and Josh were still petting the dog. Out of the corner of my eye, I seen this dog in the distance sitting in a very propped up way as dogs do when they sit. But as I looked and stared at this dog, all I could see was the black shape of a silhouette. All of a sudden, I felt this eerie feeling come upon me as if something was going to happen. I noticed the ears on the strange dog were so sharp, it looked like if you were to poke it, it would draw blood. A chilling gust of wind blew all around us as this happened and I heard screams coming from behind me. I ran over to Kimberly and Josh and asked what had happened. They said that the dog they were petting just disappeared over the sheer drop off on the other side of the road. Now, let me tell you that anybody or anything that fell off that side would have died, but we see nothing. And as they kept looking, I kept hearing strange noises coming from where I'd seen that creepy dog. I walked to where I was before I ran back over to see what they were screaming about. And sure enough, that creepy dog was still staring at me. And at that moment, I seen the dog's head looked up at them and then back at me. In that moment, a very bright beam of light lit the ground only around us. It was so bright that after the light flashed, I couldn't see anything for about a minute. Kimberly and Josh jumped up as I turned to them and asked, please tell me I wasn't the only one who seen that. We all agreed it was not our imagination and decided to huddle together and try to figure out what just happened. As we stood there contemplating on what we should do, we all started to feel that feeling again as if we were all being watched. Me and Josh started to talk about how we were going to protect Kimberly if anything was to happen. Then, out of nowhere, we turned to Kim to talk to her and noticed she was pale as a ghost standing there, lifeless. I was facing in the other direction from both of them, and then Josh started to get pale. I asked what was wrong with them, and Josh slowly quietly said, 
Dude, there is something standing about 40 feet behind you. As he told me that, chills ran down my spine through my legs, and I got weak. When I turned slowly around, scared of what I'd see, I was mortified by what I had just seen. Standing there in the bush, about 40 feet away from me, was a tall, black figure, at least 8 feet tall, and was walking towards us with a limp-like movement. The complete panic and fear blazed through our bodies. I turned to both of them and said, Start walking home now, and don't look back. We started our four mile long, frightening journey back home. Along the way there, I kept telling Josh to stay behind Kimberly and calm her down from crying with a panic. I was behind Josh because I wanted to make sure they both were in front of me so that if anything were to happen, they could get away and get help. As we were almost home, we continued to power walk through the thick woods down the gravel road and I started to feel that feeling again as if someone or something was behind me. I didn't dare look back, afraid of what I might see, but continued anyway, only to hear gravel being swept away as if somebody was running at us from behind, chasing us. I told them to start running as fast as possible since we could see Josh's house in the distance. Finally, we were able to get off the gravel road and make it up the hill to his window. We quickly opened it, climbed in, relieved that this whatever it was was over. All that night, none of us slept, a single minute still wondering and frightened over what happened. We decided to let Kim sleep in the closet of his bedroom till morning, and then would walk her home. Weeks went by as it was time for school again, keeping our story a secret. We told no one of our encounter, fearing what people would think. During lunch, we agreed to start telling people what happened, and to our surprise, some people said they had experiences at the small crossroads section also. Some people say it was some sort of alien encounter. Some say it was the Grim Reaper searching for the old slave that haunted the shack nearby and would take anybody it could get. To this day, 14 years ago, we still have no answers on what or who was with us that frightening spring night. But it has haunted us to this day and we will never forget our encounter with the supernatural. Was it an alien, or could it have been the Green Reaper, as some people suggest? I guess I'll never know. Maybe one day I'll find out, but then again, I guess I don't want to go back to that awful place ever again. Hi! I've got kind of a strange thing that's bugged me for going on probably 10 years now. So, growing up, I always felt like my parents' house was haunted. I always experienced weird things, seen shadows, and just felt uneasy. I also experienced sleep paralysis very frequently. I didn't know what it was back then, and I thought I was being specifically targeted. At night, it was like a black cloud hovering around the ceiling of the bedrooms, and I kind of remember seeing eyes. I also always got a very uncomfortable feeling going down into the basement and coming back up. Like the black cloud from the nighttime was chasing me up the stairs or something. Anyway, these were quote unquote normal experiences for me growing up as they were so frequent. However, there was this one time that really freaked me out and I cannot for the life of me find any kind of information on it. So. What happened was, I was about 16 years old, old enough to drive anyways. My parents were out in town for the night, and I'd met them for a bit on my way home from work, and then proceeded to go home myself. It was winter time, and to save heat, we had blocked off the second story of our house. I had to get something that was in my upstairs bedroom, so I opened the partition we had blocking off the stairs. When I opened the partition, there was this thing sitting on the stairs. The best way I can describe it was kind of like a gargoyle. It was hunched over and just sitting there on the stairs, eye level. It was big, adult sized, but scrawny, dark, had wings. I can't recall if it made a noise. I freaked out and ran and locked myself in another room while I called my parents. I was in full panic mode. 
I had never seen it before or since. It still bugs me to this day. I remember it so vividly. And being that it was about 10 years ago, my younger sister has since described something similar. I had never told her the story before. I have searched and searched, and the only things I can find are things about the Mothman or about gargoyles outside. Anyway, I thought I'd share because it still bugs me. I'm wondering if anyone else has experienced something similar. My parents don't believe in me or are just in denial of whatever is going on there, but I know what I saw. My encounter happened in winter of 2015. I was shoveling snow in the driveway to make room for some family that was going to visit. Normally, I shovel a space about two and a half car widths for the family vehicle and my older brother's car beside it. This time, I had to make the path onto the property a little wider and then make space for two more vehicles. Being an upstate New Yorker, there is no sense in shoveling while it is still snowing and the forecast says there's more to come. What I did was put rock salt all over what was already cleared so ice wouldn't form and then waited for it to lessen or flurries to stop. By the time it stopped, it was about 5 in the afternoon and getting dark. I figured what the heck, the snow is light enough so I could power through it before long. I've done this all my life, every winter. I've dealt with icy, heavy snow that ruins your back and shoulders and the light fluffy stuff that you see in cozy paintings. I put in my earbuds as I usually do for monotonous work and got to it. Usually I wear one so I could hear if someone calls me from the house. I wrap the loose one around my neck so it won't tug on the other as I work. Now this winter had been awful. Two weeks of single digit weather and a wind chill between 20 and 30 below zero. Any skin exposed just hurts and you shake uncontrollably if you aren't dressed in layers with snow pants and a coat or in my case, thermal coveralls. We're used to this climate but it can be dangerous if you slip up. A few years before, a guy got stuck in a blizzard and just slept in his car. The thing is, normally snow will cover the car and you're insulated. This was more of a whiteout, so it was blinding more than it was covering. To put it shortly, the cold wasn't buffered by enough snow and this fellow didn't wake up. It's sad, I know. People should never underestimate or underprepare for Mother Nature. To get back to it, I was working as fast as I could when I heard a familiar sound. A neighbor down the road, a ways, Mr. McNeil was tearing up the road. He has fits of anger where he'll speed off and go into the lesser Catskill Mountains. Basically, if you follow the road northeast from where we lived, you can head into town or go up into the mountains. There are a few dirt paths and narrow trails that only locals really know of or can point out. He's gone from around 5 or 6 p.m. until a quarter to 7. I think he made most of the tire mark paths up there from all his trips. As I turn to watch him drive up the road, I notice something in the forest across the street. To make a clear image, I'm standing in our driveway. There is a thin tree line at the end of it, bordering the road. 15 or so feet from the road is the forest. Now, I know what black bears look like. As a kid, They'd be in our backyard now and then. I was three feet from two of them once, with a back door in between us. I know how big they are, how they move, and what they look like on all fours, and even two feet. This was not a bear. This thing was on all fours, but rose up on two as it turned to see what was making the noise. The head was huge and wolf-like. I could see its tongue quickly moisten its nose. It was very dark brown, near black. I'd say it was easily seven foot tall minimum. The arms were long and its chest kind of puffed out. My guts went into a knot like never before. As McNeil's headlights came into view, I looked back over the road. He wouldn't even see me if I tried to signal. He must have been going at least 50 miles an hour. He tore up and across before I could even raise up my shovel. That thing was watching the truck head on a swivel. It kind of ruffled its fur 
and got back on all fours. I was slowly walking backward, my heart beating so loud I couldn't hear the caked snow crunching under my feet. Just as I reached the porch and put a foot on the first step, it took off. The thing moved like lightning, taking huge leaps on all fours. I was going after the truck. I could only think to myself, get inside, get inside. No doubt in my mind, he saw it in his rear view or side mirror. I got inside and told my family what happened. Well, they weren't sold on it being anything other than a bear, of course. Mr. McNeil came back way later than ever, at half past nine. He was slower this time, shining a light in the woods where the creature had been standing. He rolled by slow and kept shining that light back and forth. I'm just glad he came back at all. This would wrap up my experience, but I wanted to add that six days later, something terrible happened. A local came into the diner in town with bloody sleeves and hands. His sister, a cook at the diner, came out where he called her to the counter. Before she could ask, he said that the dogs were torn to bits. This guy was a real mountain man. He hunted everything and trained dogs all his life and was shaking like a leaf. Six 80-something pound dogs torn apart. These weren't pets. I met them many times as they grew up. With a half-second whisper, they could swarm anything with a viciousness like you wouldn't believe. He asked for her keys and said he'd leave something in the glove compartment. He didn't want her coming or going without it. We all knew it was a weapon. I looked over to my brother and gave him a face. We went over what I encountered quietly, and I think he was coming around. Also, Mr. McNeil wouldn't say much when he spoke of it, but I think he got a real good look at the thing. He didn't drive off as often anymore. We moved the following year, not that this had anything to do with it, just personal stuff like work and college. I just want to say that everyone should always have backup kits in their cars for bad weather, and then if you could avoid rural travel at night, do so. This event took place over a year ago, but I hadn't really thought to post about it until now. I don't want to dox myself, but I live in Maryland and I was with my now ex-girlfriend at her house. It was a rural area, surrounded by woods in all directions. It was night, and we were going to visit her grandparents' house, a short drive away. We got into her car, and while she was fiddling with her phone and the aux cord, I saw something in the brush, illuminated by the headlights. It was tall, pale gray, thin, with a gaunt face and stretched limbs. I don't think it stood the standard eight feet of a crawler, but my lack of depth perception makes it hard to accurately perceive distance and height. All it did was watch. Its seemingly hollow eyes fixated on me. It was gone before I could point it out to my girlfriend, and I didn't have the bravery or stupidity to investigate. I wish I had concrete evidence of what I saw, but all I have is my word and a terrifying memory. Could someone maybe explain what happened to me and my friend and what we saw two years ago? So me and my friend TJ, back in 2018, used to do a lot of cryptid and ghost hunting, especially because we're from RI. There's a lot of stories of areas with crazy history. An example is the woods, a block from my house that has some stone steps in the middle of it, completely out of the way from everything. Basically, long story short, the stairs were from a church that burnt down long ago, and rumor has it, people died in that fire, and that's why the woods are haunted now. Me and my friend B saw some thing in the woods too, which is a different story, but with this image in your head, now you can understand why this has a lot of paranormal activity. Now, back to the main part of the story. Me and TJ one night found out the conjuring house is like a 20 minute drive from us, so we decided to check it out. It was about 2 a.m. when we started driving there, and a lot of weird stuff started to happen when we got to the first road to the way to the house. For reference to how creepy this area was, it was practically out in the middle of the sticks. Barely any streetlights, and lastly, the energy was the strangest. 
it felt like we were being watched all the way to the house. When the GPS set about three minutes away from the house, TJ's radio started glitching, repeating the chorus of R.I.P. by Joji. Needless to say that the vibe got a lot darker after that, and we actually arrived. When we got there, not much happened until we were about to leave. The vibe was growing worse the longer we stayed, and then TJ heard something, so we left because the energy was something different. As we're leaving, the GPS quickly made us turn to a road different from the way we came. As soon as we were approaching the original entrance to the street of the Conjuring House. At the time, we didn't think much of it because we were just trying to leave the area because the way it was just making us feel. This road was a lot creepier than the others because of how it brought us directly in the middle of the woods. Even some parts weren't paved, if remembering correctly, with really weird looking houses spaced apart. Well, as we were going down the road, I looked down my phone, and in that second, TJ starts punching my arm, yelling, look up, look up. And as I looked up, the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life jumps across the road, like five feet away from the car, and into the woods at the speed of a cheetah. To give you guys a better idea of what it looked like, first it was as tall as a kangaroo, and I mean the tall ones. The thing had to be at least seven feet. Second, it was jumping in medium sized jumps. Not sure what the word for movement is, but quick. How a gear works. That's how smooth and fast the thing's legs touched the ground, propelled forward and repeated like in the four seconds it took to drive the car to where it was on the road. It was like a hundred feet away into the woods. Lastly, the most amazing but strange thing about it was its actual appearance. It looked like moving energy, a bunch of lines moving together in the shape of this animal looking thing, and its colors were crazy. It was a combination of neon brown, dark green, orange and some other less noticeable colors that sort of filled in the rest of its shape it was taking. As we drove by, we freaked out over the course and talked about it the whole ride home, just trying to make sense of what we saw. We even tried to find the road we were on that night on three separate occasions after that to see if we could maybe see it again, but we never found that road again. That night changed my life because I've never thought I'd see something like that so close, but since then, I've been trying to find answers. So, I'm an avid hunter, and I used to hunt the Corps of Engineers land on the Texas side of the Red River. I was going to get my trail camera and check the pictures for any sign of wild hogs moving along the river and eating at the bait I had set up. When I pulled up to the parking area, I was the only truck there. It's hot in the summer, and in those woods, there is little breeze. It's about a 20 minute walk through the woods to the camera. So I had navigated my way through the brush and had come around the old piece of original bridge supports and turned slightly northwest, and something yelled at me about a hundred yards away through the woods. It's hard to describe the noise. It didn't taper off, just a blast. I froze. And I don't know why, but my instinct was to whoop at it. I whooped and it remained frozen too. I knew where it was, but I couldn't see it through the trees. I raised my rifle to locate whatever it was through the scope. I systematically started searching and all of a sudden it tore off through the woods. I saw a glimpse of it through the scope as it took off. What I saw is difficult to explain, but you know how a skier's legs look when they are crouched? It was like that, like a spring compressing the knees to unleash power. The sun shone through the trees and I could see the legs had reddish brown fur but was shaggier than a deer. Almost like coarse hog hair, but was soft. Everything about this makes me want to say it was a deer. The fur color, the legs bent, I would even entertain a deer having shaggier fur. but. The yell is what makes me know it was something else. Its yell was intimidating and demanding. It knew I was there and was letting me know it was there. After it ran off, I was filled with a sense of dread and had to talk myself out of not going back to the truck and leaving the camera.
I'll start off by saying no, this isn't my story. But it was such a crazy enough encounter that I have asked each of my friends throughout the years to recount the events. This happened around the year 2000. After about a year after this took place, I started dating one of these friends, and that's when I first heard about this dog-wolf story. I have since asked each friend, over years and miles apart, and they all remember the exact same encounter. Before my ex was even my boyfriend, let's call him Jay, he and our other friends were about 18 years old. At that age, I remember it being an adventure to find a place to smoke. Let's go hike to so-and-so and smoke. Ah, the good old days when we got away from our parents and planned a day around smoking. It was Jay and his best friend B, and their girlfriends S and M. The four of them decided to drive to Mount Pitska, a beautiful wooded area outside of Eugene, Oregon. It's more of a hill, but it's nature in its prime for sure. I've been out there many times growing up, and I know exactly what trail they were on, and the main one that connects the parking lot to the river. They had driven in B's little white sedan, parked in the parking lot, and then walked to the river. On the way to the river from the lot, there is a very small bridge that crosses a small creek, which is relevant for later. The group spent the day out there swimming and puffing, puffing and swimming, just being typical Oregonian teens. I can imagine that hunger is what drove them to go home after a few hours as the sun began to set. Either activity alone is bound to get somebody hungry, let alone both. So they walked along the well-worn main dirt path to the parking lot. This path has since been paved, according to Google Maps. It doesn't take but 20 minutes or so for them to get back to the little footbridge by the parking lot that they had crossed when they hiked in. When they reached the small footbridge near the parking lot, B looked out into the vast field between them and the wooded mountain and noticed a huge dog near the tree line, about 100 yards away. They all later described it as the biggest dog they had ever seen. The dog was just sitting there, not looking scary, just looking like a humongous, friendly dog. It was starting to get dark from M and J's descriptions and the drawing she did for me later in 2005. It was very shaggy and furry. I may even still have that notebook where she drew the dog thing. If I find it, I'll send it to you. My friends continued to walk across the small wooden bridge and one of the girls screamed. The big dog was now on its hind legs, standing much closer than they had seen it before. It had traversed most of the large field in seconds it took them to get across this 10 foot long bridge. Whatever this was, it was fast, quiet and stealthy. My four friends ran to the car and they had the classic cliche, I can't get the key in, because B was fumbling madly for the keys. At this point, the dog was standing on its hind legs at the very edge of the parking lot, looking at them. Still had the dog face, still had the dog body, just standing up. They never saw it walking on all four or just two. It was like every time they looked up, it was just standing there closer. As Jay had said, every time they looked up, he was closer but not moving. All of them recounted how surreal it was to see a dog standing on its hind legs. I don't know if it ran for a few ticks and then stood up again at intervals in the field, but that's the way they describe it. Many times I asked them, are you sure it wasn't a bear? No, it was definitely a dog standing on its hind legs, a big dog that was stalking them. Also, this is in Lane County, Oregon in the year 2000. There are few if any bear out there at all. It would be odd, but then again, I wasn't there. The kids got into the car and sped off, leaving the dog to his own business. I've never had a reason to doubt any of their stories. In fact, S doesn't like to talk about the incident at all because it's just far too creepy for her to recall. Hello, I'm a 21 year old guy from Denmark and back in 2017, I was going for a vacation road trip in the United States. We started off in Las Vegas where my mom visited an old woman she lived with for a year back when she was 16, an exchange student. We then drove to LA and then to Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and finally 
Louisiana. I am, and I was very into true scary stories. I especially enjoy cryptid, unexplained creatures, and skinwalker wendigo stories. And I told my family about it, but my sister and her boyfriend teased me about believing in such things. My dad doesn't believe in God or superstitious or anything, but have had some strange things happen to him. So he is a little more open-minded, which my mom also, because she has had some experience some paranormal things. When we were driving through the deserts of Arizona, my dad had to have a smoke and we wanted to stretch our legs. We got out of the car and my dad started smoking and we looked around. Then suddenly, my sister says, what is that? And pointed towards the desert where we immediately noticed a lion-sized, totally black cat. Like it was so black that it absorbed all the light. It was just walking. It had a really long and thick tail and it walked so weird like it was a robot just totally stiff legs. Then it noticed us and just froze and turned its head really fast and just stared. Then it turned its whole body without moving its head and started walking in our direction. Then I said that we should probably get in the car and get moving because I wasn't staying around and waiting for it to reach us. My family quickly agreed and we hurried to get in the car and take off. For the rest of the trip, my sister's boyfriend and my sister didn't tease me about my unexplainable creatures anymore. We were really agitated by this thing. I started to Google and search about animals that live in Arizona, and I couldn't find anything about a big feline that was black anywhere in the world. The only big cats I could find were jaguars, and it's rare they get black and not that black. It was also much larger than a jaguar, and jaguars, cougars, or mountain lions live in forested areas, definitely not in the middle of dirt or cacti. I still think about this a lot, and I've never found an answer to what this were, and I believe even more now that there are creatures in this world that we know nothing about. I apologize for the length of the post, but maybe somebody can shed some light on what I saw. I work as a paramedic in rural area of Virginia. This entails a lot of backwoods mountain roads late at night. This encounter happened around summer of 2016. One night around 2 or 3 a.m., I was driving back from a call and was traveling up a road I have been up many times before. My partner and I were just listening to music and making the best of being at work. As I rounded an upward slanted curve, the headlight of my unit hit something that still gives me chills to this day as I'm typing. This creature was almost in a position that reminded me of a catcher in baseball, as if it was squatting beside the road, maybe 10 feet in a small grassy patch. It was so pale and white, I distinctly remember its arms and legs being so long, just unnaturally long and slender. Its fingers were the same. If I had to estimate, its height, I would say it was easily six feet tall. Its head was facing away from me. I honestly did not get a good look to see any facial features. I literally was shocked. I didn't speak a word. I turned to my partner who was in the passenger seat and the look on his face told me I was not seeing an imaginary thing. I said to him, please tell me what you saw. Keep this PG. He agreed and did it with a lot of colorful words. I may have been 50 yards away when we agreed to turn around and look again. When we get back to the same place, there was nothing. I honestly didn't have the courage to get out of the ambulance to check. My partner did pull out a spotlight we have in our units to check the woods, and again, nothing. I can't stress how pale, bony, and slender this creature was. It was like the pale man from Pan's Labyrinth but I could see every bone in its body. I only got a two to three second look at this creature. Does anybody have insight? It was about a month ago that I learned of the crawler identification. While listening to a podcast actually, and this guest described an encounter with this creature, I finally learned the name of what I feel best describes what I saw in 2002 and 2003. 
Both of my encounters take place along the Texas border with Mexico. The first encounter, I was with a friend exploring irrigation canals at night in the farmlands near my house. These canals are elevated about 20 feet and water is down at the bottom of the trench. While driving, the truck's headlights illuminated a small, lanky, gray, white creature on the side of the canal. As soon as the headlights hit the crawler, it leapt into the darkness of the canal, with similar ease as a cat might jump. Both my friend and I immediately shouted, What was that? The chupacabra in my area's local cryptid legend. Until I learned of the existence of the crawler, I had assumed a chupacabra was what I saw, or some type of alien gray. But the descriptions of the chupacabra don't accurately describe a crawler, and the many descriptions of the crawler are spot on with what I saw. The second encounter was at my house. Occasionally, I would climb up onto the second story of my family home, for a bit of stargazing. While lying on my back, staring into the sky, I heard a noise coming from the other end of the roof. Thinking it was probably a possum just messing around, I tilted my head from the sky to the direction of the sound. Something was slowly moving towards me in the dark from the end of the roof. For a few moments, I stayed in place, just trying to focus and make an identification of the animal. It wasn't until the creature got about half away across the roof. My eyes could finally pick up on the features, disqualifying it from being any other animal native to my area. It looked like a small, hairless person, crawling on its long, lanky hands and feet. Needless to say, I didn't stick around any longer. I hauled ass down the tree I'd come up, back to the safety of the house. Well, after my nymph's fairy story, a lot of people have asked me to give more. So, there's a lot of you who won't believe me, but... My village is a freaking supernatural place with weird things happening over the years. And there was even a UFO crash. You can all search it on Google. My village is Atalanti. A-T-A-L-A-N-T-I. Named after the Greek Amazon. And it was all over the news back in 1990 when the weird object landed. But let's get started. My first story. While my great-grandfather from my grandfather's side was young, he was working for someone who had sheep, and one night, one of the sheeps went nuts. So during the night while they were asleep, they heard some noises and they woke up to find the sheep having a saddle on and walking. They tried to stop it, but it was like it didn't listen. None of the sheeps ever did this before. So when the sheep turned around, it didn't really look like a sheep anymore, but something else. Like the voice was deeper, and it was like it had walked on two legs. The face was like distorted, and it was definitely not white anymore. My great-grandfather was so scared after he run, and never worked with this guy again. Story number two. There are a lot of rumors about people using dark magic and evil things, and a guy my grandfather knew didn't believe these things were real. He kept walking around telling this to the locals at the cafes, and a weird old dude had heard him, and he was like, you'll see tonight. So he sent a weird freaking donkey to him that kept kicking him at night until he begged to stop and said he believed in demonic entities. Story number three. Now this is a neighbor of my grandfather while they were in their 20s. He was a man who went to church very often, always praying, always believing in God, and it was like the devil tricked him every day. There was a boy who kept calling him at nights at the stairwell of his house. He asked him to go outside and play. And after a while, when he didn't join him, the boy turned into a black dog. That happened for a long time until they called a priest and it stopped. Story number four. This happened to one of my uncles. He came back from work late at night. They were working as farmers with clover. Anyway. There used to be a small and narrow street that led to the house faster, but no one went there during late night. It was a crossroad, and there was a small faucet there too, but everyone avoided it after midnight. Well, my uncle decided to heed faster home, rather than to stay safe, and something invisible attacked him. It grabbed him by the neck and pushed him down. 
he immediately started saying a prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and the thing left. Possibly a demon, a priest had later told him to never use that street. And guess what? The street doesn't exist anymore. There's a deserted house there now, and I don't want to know what's hiding in there. Story number five. My aunt used to hear every night a weird banging outside of their window when they moved in their new home, like someone was chopping wood. They often went out to see if there was someone, but no one was there, and apparently they learned that they have killed soldiers at the place during World War II. Crazy. Story number three, the alien UFO crash. So, during 1990 in the summer, there were a lot of UFO sightings all around Greece, and one actually crashed at a hill next to my village. Story number seven. My cousin said at their clover field once that something had landed again, because there was a circle, and it was like burned, and for literally about two years, nothing grew on that place again. Story number eight. When we went with my grandfather to buy cheese from a guy he knows, we walked into his farm. I looked around the walls and it was full of lashes, like the whips that hit the horses with, but some of them were a bit too much. They seemed super heavy, and I asked my grandfather what's that. I was like 9 to 10, but I have never seen that type of lash before. It didn't look normal. Anyway, my grandfather told me to shush, and he said we'll talk home. So... When we went home, he told me that man calls demons and hits them. He asked them who they hurt and then hits them so hard with those whips. So I was like, oh, he's nice then. And my grandfather said immediately, he hasn't been in church for many, many years because what he's doing is against God. Even though he hits them, he still uses dark magic to call them in. Well, guys, these are just my stories and I have a lot more about ghosts and saints appearing at churches, and so many kids I know have their own stories from their grandparents. I swear, my village, and especially central Greece, there's something there. Some people even claim to have seen satyrs at the ancient place of Delphi, that they're weird electromagnetic powers, and don't get me started about Mount Olympus. Anyway, hope you enjoy these. This story takes place in the deserts of Arizona. Me and my dad are on a camping trip with the rest of our family, but thanks to the size of the family, we had to take two cars. One car is for one boys and one for girls. I had three sisters, but thanks to the size of the family, we had to take two cars. One car, one for boys and one for girls. I had three sisters, but I was the only boy. Three hours later, a nightfall approaches making it harder to drive with only one headlight working. So, my dad decides we should stop and camp there for the night. I said I was down, as long as we sleep in the car, not really camping, but if you had to choose between a car seat and the ground, then we'll talk. Anyway, he agreed, so we drove off the road and onto the sand with cactus as far as the eye could see. Both begin our descent into slumber. Only I couldn't, as I was a bit of an insomniac, which I was fine with. It just meant I could look up at the night sky. But then I heard the blood-curdling screech of some kind of humanoid being howling at the vast emptiness of the desert. At first, I thought it was a coyote, but coyotes don't sound like that at all. Frozen solid, I look out the window to see a tall, lanky creature standing on all fours of its extremely long, unnatural appendages. At first glance, I would have just blended in with the cacti surrounding the area, with its seemingly prickly skin, but I didn't just peek and look away. I was flat out staring at it until my eyes locked with its two small white dots was all I could see. I'm shitting bricks at this point, but bricks turn to boulders as it full on charges out the small car, which could easily be flipped with little effort. I guess that all the commotion woke up my dad because before I knew it, we're driving off the sandbank into the road, flooring it the whole way, only to get the back window smashed in with the creature slamming its two finger hand in the glass screen, sending shards everywhere, even into its own hand. 
It didn't follow us for much longer, as it had glass shrapnel in its hand, and it started to slow down and limp away, leaving blood marks on the back door. We kept driving without looking back, fearing to see it again. Eventually, we had to stop as we caught up with the rest of the family, and we all shared the same expressions on our faces, the look of terror glued on. That is one day I will never forget. This happened when I was just 12 years old, and might take some backstory for it to make sense. So, at the time, I was a young girl, about to start high school. Now, I had some anxiety from the stress of changing schools, and some family trouble, which didn't make things any easier for me. So my mother is from Nova Scotia, and my father is from Europe. We were staying in a cabin in Nova Scotia. I won't say exactly where, but it was a place where we stayed almost every summer, so I was used to sleeping there. This cabin is located on the water, with another property on one side, and a patch of forest on the other. This happened one day in August, but I can't seem to remember the exact date. At the time, my father was just away for the night to visit a friend, so it was just me, my twin sister, who we'll just call Annabelle, and my little brother. We'll call him Thomas, and my mother Amanda, of course, not their real names. So, I was listening to something on my iPad, I don't remember what, and looking out the window at the forest. For the longest time, it was just forest, nothing for me to be alarmed about. But after an hour or so, I saw something in the woods. At first, I thought it was just the reflection of car headlights on the leaves, but when I kept looking at it, I realized that they were eyes, two large gray oval shaped eyes. I didn't know what to do at first, I was paralyzed. I slowly walked away from the window and the eyes shifted their gaze as whatever it was disappeared into the woods. I was shaken but decided not to tell anyone and tried to rationalize it as just being a reflection as I had thought before. I didn't see anything else for the rest of the night but the next morning is when I really got a scare. I was sleeping in a room with my brother and my mother while my sister slept down the hall. It was very hot, so I was having trouble sleeping. At around four o'clock in the morning, I had a dream. It was one of those dreams where you were just running, but you don't really know why, except this time, I did know what I was running from. I didn't even need to look back to know what I was running from. It was the creature from the woods, and it was chasing me in all fours from the sound of it. The dream only lasted a few seconds, but the worst part was when I woke up. My heart was beating faster than it ever had, and I couldn't open my eyes, no matter how hard I tried. It felt as though something was holding them closed. All I could hear was my heart beating, but I could also hear this other sound. It sounded like heavy, raspy breaths mixed with shrill screaming. After about 15 seconds, that felt like 15 minutes. I could open my eyes again, but I almost wish I hadn't. When I opened my eyes, I saw a tall, seven-foot creature slowly going out the door of the room. The creature's skin was a light gray and looked not scaly, but almost like that of a frog. Its mouth stretched across its face when it opened its mouth. It opened much wider than any human could. It didn't look at me as it walked out of the room and I just stared at it as it walked down the stairs and right through the locked front door. I didn't sleep much after that, and in the morning, I decided not to tell my family about it, since they did not see or hear the creature, and I did not want them to think I was insane. I wish I could say that that was the end of it, but this was not the last time that I saw that creature. Later that summer, we were back in our apartment. Now. Our apartment looks over a street with six lanes, so there's almost always at least one car on that stretch of road, even late at night. So the night this took place, it was around 11 o'clock, and I was the only one in our living room. I was going to go to bed when I noticed something unusual outside my window. The street outside was completely empty, not even a parked car, but what I did see still makes me shudder whenever I think about it. The creature from the cabin was slowly walking down the road. At first, it just walked down the road, 
then it stopped. Slowly, and to my horror, it turned its head up to make eye contact with me. Our apartment building has many levels, and it was at least 60 feet from our building. It met my eyes exactly. This lasted for about five seconds. Then, it looked away, and I ran to my bed as fast as I could. To this day, I still do not know what I saw those two nights. And if anyone has any idea what I saw, please let me know. I haven't seen this creature since, and I hope I never see anything like that again. This all happened within a span of a week. I was messing around with some friends after school by the Salt River. We were talking when we noticed something out of the corner of our eyes. It looked like some kind of human, but with a full set of fur on its body. You bet your sweet butt, me and my friends got out of there as quick as we could. I thought that would be the last we saw of it, but no. We saw it again just a few days later. This time, we were walking up the road near the first place we found it. My friend had to take a whiz, so he went into the woods. A couple of minutes later, I heard him scream. I got the hell out of there as quickly as possible. It turns out he went to pee behind a log and found some footprints. Shortly after this, we heard what sounded like thrown rocks. That's when he screamed. This all happened about two years ago. We have not seen it since. I remember six years ago, when I was 19, me and a few friends went backpacking in the Appalachian Range of Pennsylvania. We had set up camp in the early afternoon. We knew it was a dangerous area, so we each brought guns for protection against bears. Anyway, as it got closer to the evening, at around 5 p.m., I was fishing in a river about a quarter mile away from camp, and I started to smell something bad. I couldn't describe the smell, it was just bad. I heard some rustling in the bushes about 200 yards away. It was quite clear that it was footsteps from the sound of it. Almost thinking that it was one of my friends, I realized that they were south of me, so I started to panic. Whatever it was was getting closer to me and my fishing spot, and the smell started getting stronger. My fishing pole in my left hand and my right hand on my gun as I was getting ready to unholster it. I couldn't get over the smell, but at the same time, I was worried about my life. I kept my eyes looking in the direction of the loud footsteps. I could see a big open area, kind of like a pasture, about 65 yards away which where the footsteps are coming from. I see what I think is a man in a possible reddish-brown ghillie suit walking behind the trees on the edge of an open area. But the problem is that about two to three feet taller than me, as I'm only 6'2", which was unbelievable. None of my friends are close to my height, but that thing that I saw was built. I can see the muscle movement of its legs. I'm no expert about Sasquatch, but I do know what I saw was no bear, as it was walking on two legs, and not in any way that I've ever seen. Both the legs and arms are primitively built, like an oversized gorilla. The thing probably weighed, gosh, about 900 pounds. It ended up vanishing as it went to my right in the deeper part of the woods, but after the footsteps had stopped. I heard what sounded like chatter, kind of like some sort of Indian language. After the chatter stopped, the footsteps started up again but it was footsteps going in one direction and another sound of footsteps going in the opposite direction. I never told my friends about the experience because I didn't want them thinking that I was crazy. Some people might be skeptic about this, but, but I know what I saw and heard. To start off, I live on the East Coast in Central Virginia and the property I live on contains 10 acres of fields and woods. Just as some background info, the property was once a battleground during the Civil War. A historical battle took place right around where I live. My friends and I have always seen ghosts and paranormal activity around the property whenever we hang out or camp, but that isn't why I'm telling you this. I should probably mention that our campsite contains tarp roofs with pallets set up as walls. I should also mention that we always carry firearms with us in the woods. 
but I'm always enforceful about making sure nobody has any bullets chambered in their weapons unless they have a reason to shoot. One night, in late April, three friends and I were hanging out by the fire within our campsite. At about 11.30 p.m., one of my buddies and I wandered down the trail with no flashlights of any sort in the dark. We stopped at an opening by the field where we could see the stars. We chatted about random topics for about 10 minutes until we start hearing steps and twigs snapping in multiple areas in front of us. We are skeptical, but keep an ear out. Then all of a sudden, I yell, and uncharacteristically, rack a bullet in the chamber of my rifle as quick as I can. Then, I immediately aim my rifle towards what I'm seeing. It was dark, so I couldn't distinguish details, but this is what I saw. It was a pale, white silhouette. It was crawling uphill from another trail. It didn't seem intimidating though, rather intently curious. Its body moved similar to the way a chicken bobs its head, but more subtle. My friend and I yelled for our other two friends to come assist us as the creature got closer. We yelled louder. We weren't terrified, simply frightened and in awe. The creature went behind a tree and repeatedly poked its head out and back behind the tree. It occasionally began to crawl towards us from behind the tree, but would retreat once again. All its movement were slow and agile, and after about two minutes, it disappeared, as in we couldn't see it because of the brush, but it probably fled into the woods. Our other two friends arrived a minute or so after the creature had already fled. Their excuse was that they thought we had ran into a hunter or somebody so they decided to take the bullets out of their weapons. Anyway, the next day we went back to the spot of the sighting and we found disturbed leaves and tracks exactly where we saw the creature. The friend I was with during the sighting is a skilled hunter and tracker. We followed the tracks that led towards off the property until it seemed to either go cold or we lost them altogether. We did find a small sized goat skull in the woods with no carcass to follow near the sighting area. Does anyone know what this could possibly be? The closest thing it resembles that I can think of is the rake creature. I have been hesitant to write about these incidents. I do not want to be labeled a loon. I do not know what is coming in my house, but I do know that it is not human. To begin, I live in a small town. Not much happens with the exception of meth heads murdering each other. I have been visited by something with such frequency that I noticed a pattern. It always occurs during the week of the full moon. I cannot see it, but I smell a strong odor of dried, decaying flowers and a sickly sweet earthly decay smell. Sometimes it is so strong around me that I get nauseous very overwhelming. That being said, I don't know what it is. I am not afraid of it. I get the feeling it is watching me, but I am not afraid. But whatever it is, my cats stare in the direction of it, which is very off-putting. I'm not crazy. I also check outside in daylight hours. I'm no idiot to see if there is any dead animals, but there's none. There, this has been happening for at least two years, and I am just curious to y'all's thoughts. I do live over underground in tunnels in my town, running to all the old civil defense buildings used as bomb shelters. Anything could be there. Last thing, weird and wonderful things happen to me all the time. What's your take? I work on oil rigs. I have since I was 20 and I'm 33 now. In 2007, I was working for Nomac Drilling, and they have since sold out to Patterson, and we were drilling in the Haynesville for natural gas. Anyone who works on rigs knows that work can take you way off the beaten path from what normal civilization is used to. Some places, you're on ranch roads for an hour before you reach the location, and others you're driving on roads canopied by trees in the backwoods of Louisiana. This happened to me in the latter. We were rigging right down after fishing a well, 
and we were on our last night of the seven day hitch. About halfway through our 12 hour tour, pronounced tower, and we had pretty much finished and making sure everything was tied down securely for the rig move. We killed the light plants and the driller let us knock off early. This area was accessible outside Houghton and the lease was actually on the back of the Barksdale Air Force Base, but we had to leave the way we came in. Driving home at two in the morning seemed pretty normal at first and I made it to the blacktop with no issues. The blacktop was still canopied by trees and other than the lights from my truck, everything was pitch black. Out of nowhere, still basically in the middle of nowhere, this thing appears almost close enough to get hit on my driver's side. Okay, weird, but even more strange, he was leaning at what I swear was an impossible angle for somebody not to tip over. They were stretched, reaching out towards my truck, and what I could see the face was morbid and twisted. The hairs on the back of my neck raised, and I gassed it to speed back closer to society. It was about a two hour drive home and I felt off the rest of the trip. More oddly, I was working over on a separate occasion with one of the crews that work when I'm home, and another hand was talking about a very similar, if not identical experience. I don't know who or what I saw, and the face could have been a blur from a relative distance, speed, and the time I actually saw it, whatever it was, but what could it have possibly been? My husband and I were driving home down Winchester Southern Road towards Street Route 22 around 9 p.m. on 12 20 19. It was completely dark outside by this time. We were going around 60 miles an hour. My husband was on high alert for deer. We were just talking to each other when we approached the right hand turn off to Wyandotte Road. My husband fell silent. He saw a very large, very tall, bipedal creature running toward the road from the left-hand side. Within a split second, I also saw this creature as it continued approaching the road at a full run. It entered into the peripheral of our headlights and came within two to three feet of the driver's side window. Comparing the creature to our truck, it had to have been nearly eight feet tall as it was slightly slouched while running and was a head taller than our truck. It had blondish red fur and domed shoulder head area. Since we were going around 60 miles an hour as all of this happened, it ended up barely missing our truck and crossing the road behind us. We didn't speak for 15 to 20 seconds until my husband finally said, What was that? We immediately turned around and traveled down Wyandotte Road in the direction it went behind us, but I did not see or hear anything. We also used a spotlight from the truck to look along the road on both sides where we initially saw it, but did not see any disturbance. The next morning, we stopped at the exact spot again and looked for anything on the ground in the area, but did not see anything. 